This is not the fad. This is not the topic of today. But, oh my God, Crime Sleeping's giving me a headache. She doesn't get it. She's not, I don't think she'll ever get it. It's just like, whew, girl. <coughs> yeah, you are, Southern gal. You're in the Mean Girls crew. What's up, guys? Hey, Dad. Hey, Mom. Hey, Oki, Grain, Grain. Hey, y'all. So, look, yeah, Bangs is, she's frustrating, man. She is frustrating. Hey, Reese Cup. I just, it's like, I'm so proud of Deets for, like, that organically happened. Sleuthing a situation. She killed it. I'm so proud of her. They did so good. That panel was so good last night. But we have updates. <laughs> kinda. Kinda got updates. Um, About Stacey Peterson. So I want to play this. It's a 20 minute video. But I have it sped up. So. It shouldn't take, it should maybe take 10 or 15. 
So um, let's play this video just as like a recap and we'll jump into it. And then the coroner or the first medical examiner, he he was shysty too. Like it was like a good old boy system where the coroner wanted to keep eyes off of Peterson. Um, and his third wife um was found in a bathtub. He supposedly found her in a bathtub. Um, and it was ruled an accident. Uh, was it an accident or unaliving? I can't remember. And um then his fourth wife went missing and that's who we're talking about today now he is doing time Okay. We're back. We're back. <laughs> it was from what I was playing. Damn it, man. Okay, that's what Holla tried to warn me about. Let's see. Um, I already removed it. It was, let me see. Crime Watch. Crime Watch. Damn, it was five years old. Like, bruh, come on. But anyways, it tells the whole story. They exhume the third wife's body. They find him guilty of um, unaliving her. 
And so he's doing time for that, and they still haven't found Stacy. So they haven't pressed charges or found him. He hasn't been found guilty for Stacy's disappearance. Hey, Kate the Magnificent. Um, but while he was in jail serving some of his sentence for the third wife, he set up a hit on the prosecutor that got him put away so then he got 38 years tacked on to what he already had no he had 38 years i think and then with setting up the hit with the prosecutor he did it i mean on a jail phone call and everything he got 40 years added to it for that Yes, the one that drowned in a dry bathtub. Yeah. Kathleen was the third wife. She's the one that drowned in a dry bathtub. Oh, yeah, I'll ignore my phone. I don't check my phone usually while I'm live unless somebody tells me I need to. All right, so we're going to go over here. This was two days ago. It's short. It's a one, thir one minute, 34 second. Peterson is looking to overturn a 2012 conviction. Diane Papu is live from the Will County Courthouse in Joliet with more on the case. Diane. And Tanya Drew Peterson Sorry, is looking Southern to Gal. overturn that conviction because he says he was denied effective legal re rep representation at his trial. This morning, convicted killer Drew Peterson may be back in a Will County courtroom seeking a new trial. The former Bolingbrook police sergeant claims his former attorney, Joel Brodsky, poorly represented him at his trial in 2012 and didn't let him testify on his own behalf. Peterson, now 70 years old, was convicted of killing his third wife, Kathleen Savio, in 2004. He's also serving time for plotting a murder for hire from prison to kill Will County State's attorney, James Glasgow. Peterson also remains a prime suspect in the disappearance of his fourth wife wife, Stacy Peterson, who vanished in 2007. However, he's never been charged in that case. ABC7 legal analyst Gil Sofer says the odds are against Peterson getting a new trial. He has nothing to lose. There's absolutely no reason why a man who's twice convicted and serving decades in jail won't try everything he can to get out. Peterson is now being represented by public defenders at a status hearing last month. His attorneys say he recently under And don't forget, he, Peterson also like played with the media. Like he would come out there with his own little camcorder and get in their face and talk shit to them. This is that dude. Into mental health valuation to determine his competency. The results of that evaluation are still not known. Today's court hearing here at the Will County Courthouse begins at 9.30. Okay, so next, this is the update. Okay. Our first-hand account uh, on all of this breaking news, the woman who has not given up searching for her sister for 16 years. Uh, she joins us live now, Stacy's sister, Cassandra Kales. Uh, Cassandra, thank you for being with us. You have been relentless. Yes, yeah, crazy, um, all right. Yes, that was him. Looking for your sister and what happened here. And this is a bombshell tonight, uh, the fact that, that these remains have been found in the canal there where Alex was just standing. H how did this all come about, Cassandra? Walk us through it. Um, basically now, let me... Stacy's sister has not stopped searching for her and has found her not once, not twice, but three times. And they still won't help her um, have her remains pulled up. Basically, I... This woman emptied her whole retirement, spent $801,000 trying to find Stacy never stopped. Um, we've had hey, amen. We were still on our searches, and back in 2007, um, November 19th, and two. So, listen to what she's saying here because see, Stacy, if I'm not mistaken, she went missing in 2007. Pay attention to what she says here. 2007, we found a female body, which was basically my sister. Um, you can see the hair waving the breasts 
and her legs. She was becoming buoyant and, but not buoyant enough to come to the top. Now that was in 2007, the same year she went missing that they found her once of the surface because she was weighed down. Um, she was at that location for three days. Um, state police were notified and they didn't, um, do anything. Um, they, they were sent everything. They had the coordinates and then me and my team, we were threatened to be arrested if we acted on anything. And after the third day, um, she was gone and we just went on continuing searching. Then the spring of 2008, we expanded and continued and we found her, um, down the canal, same canal, just down a little bit, uh, resting on the bottom. You can see decomp, not in that video. Um, there's actually another image. Um, and it's, you can see decomp and the flesh, um, going, you can actually see a fish, um, above her body. She still had flesh, but she lost her eyes and her feet were gone. So she finds her the same year. She's being held down by something. She's being weighted down. So she wasn't able to float. But she pretty much knew that was her sister. She tells them they don't do nothing. They go back out there. She's gone. Then they find her again. And this time she's in the more advanced stages of decom. Um, because just because she's weighted down doesn't mean she can't move at all. She's, she can still slide depending on the current and everything. She can still slide through with whatever was weighing her down. Um, she just won't come up. So the second time they found her, she was a little more into the advanced stages of decomp. And then now she's completely, they found her again, and she's a skeleton. Um, it was kind of turning skeletal. Um, in four, in oh, thank you, Mama. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Mama. I'll play the Super Chat song after this. I don't want to play it during this. It's sad. Inform the state police um, again. Nothing. Um, I think I fought them for like a year and then they just went out and did a blind dive one day and didn't even like re-sonar it. Then, um, which is, I, the technology keeps getting better and better. Oh, I was hoping to stop it right there so y'all can kind of see. Hold on. Um, which is, I, the tech. Okay. Let me get the closed caption off. Okay. So... This is, this is the skull, right? Here's the eye socket right here. This is her lower jaw. It's her neck and spine, or part of it. Her left shoulder and her right shoulder. Technology keeps getting better and better, and I looked for the best of the best, and that's when I found the one and only sonar rov and had it brought in from alaska and that's what we got and that was just out that of sheer is luck it incredible had yeah sorry to interrupt yes. you i mean i'm just looking at the images cassandra and the fact that you had to find this she had to find her sister not once not twice but three times and now it's probably going to be a fourth time because they're going to have to relocate her again sonar RV from Alaska to come down and that you were able to locate these remains. It is unbelievable. And I don't understand. I'm just trying to understand, like, what are the police doing? If you were able to locate the skull and other bones and you know where, where they are, I, I would think there'd be a dive team in the water tonight going to collect the remains. No. Like, what, what is going on? That image, that, well, that's actually live video you're looking at. You can see the silt moving around the, the grabber claw. Um, so basically, we had the ROV sitting on top, 
just in that position sitting on the bottom and I had called state police. I had called the state's attorney. They came out, they seen it. I even set up a tent cause it was cold out. Um, and we showed them everything and then we just stood there and they just said, well, you expect us to come out tonight or to right now. And I just get pushed back. And then I had to call them every day. Then I called the FBI and finally I got the FBI to come in three months later after I was on that. And they just kind of. So three months after this video was captured and it, you can see right here on the screen, it's, it's upside down. So what they've done is they have flipped it upside down for us so that we can see it better. They did a blind dive and floated around. I have that on video. They were all just floating on the top of the water hole the, the whole time. And then when I was there, they didn't even talk to me and they treat me like a criminal. So, and then at the end, they told me that that area is cleared. So that area is cleared. Now I'm just trying to get some funds and get, get that equipment back. And so she wants to get the equipment that she used to find her this last time. She wants to get it back from Alaska again. Um, they said it's clear. It's not, so there's no crime scene. I'll, I'll walk into state police with her skull in my hand. It, it, it's somebody's. It's not, I don't know if it's my sister, but it's definitely somebody's, That's right. somebody's loved one that needs to be coming home. The fact that she found her the first time before decomp uh, and then a second time and through advanced stages of decomp and then now is skeletonized. Uh, uh that's, I think it's Stacy. I 100% think it's her. So. so they say the area is cleared, but you've got the sonar RV there uh, with the images. Yeah. I mean, both of those things can't be true. And, and, and how far that away way, could that, that have floated? I mean. It didn't. It covers with They said it was instantly. a rock. Yeah, they said that was a rock. And I actually have video footage. That is of not that a rock. We went to move the ROV. That we actually bumped the skull and you could see the underside that is not a rock not at the all skull like the you know the bottom of your skull it fell off mm. but it gets resilted so, over very quick thank you for watching all right so now let's go over here to our favorite not so favorite um divers and he made a video for her so I ain't even gonna hate on them. Hey y'all, so this is Trey Narc Divers. I just seen this news on News Nation from Stacy Peterson. Um, reach out to me, the sister of Stacy Peterson, Cassandra. Please reach out to me. We have sonar, we're a dive team. We dive in any and all types of conditions. If you can get us in the location of that canal where you found the human remains, we will dive it and hopefully bring some answers. Please reach out to me. I sent you a friend request on Facebook. Get a hold. Now I was mad at you the other day, bro. And I stick by that, but this is super kind. This is super cool for him to offer to do this. Well, me, please, we'll come up there, dive the location where you found the remains, mm. and go. Yes, from there. get so her, please, get reach her. Reach out to me if this doesn't get some, some type of movement started for the other dive teams to go do it and thoroughly find those remains. I'm not saying it's your, you know, the remains of your sister or not, but it looks like it's definitely someone's loved mm -hmm. one. So please get a hold of me, and hopefully. By me saying this, the other dive teams are there right now. Hopefully, they get in the water and do what they're supposed to do and pull the remains. It's not that hard. Please get a hold of me. It's Trey Narc Divers. It's Trey Lombardo on Facebook. Comment. Send me a friend request. Something. Thank you all. Yes, girl. Get in touch with them. Get in touch with them, girl. All right. So, then we've got. He's from Narc divers n-a-r-k-e-d dive divers he's from the one that made the video about the saying that news nation and united cajun navy used and abused them at riley strain's search that's who that is Yeah, redeem yourself. He's the that's who it is. It's the live I did the other day, what last week, where I was debunking what he was putting out there about United Cajun Navy. Yeah. 
that's him same dude um but what else i mean if you're gonna offer to do that for her absolutely i'll promote that here is the gofundme she set up it is a pro it, it is donation protected so that's good Okay, they've raised $150 out of $20,000. It was started on uh, February something. I'm trying to think. February, February, February. Where would it be? And see, Narc Divers could go right here and contact her. I was trying to see when the GoFundMe was set up. I think it was February 25th or 26th. there's the link to it in case anybody wants to assist i will be assisting as soon as possible um it says on october 28th okay so october 28th 2007 is when stacy went missing it was november 2007 when she found her the first time in that canal where she could see her hair and her breast and her legs. Yeah. Okay. On October. So a month later, a month later in the height and like the height of the search on October 28, 2007, my sister Stacy Peterson was murdered in her Bo boiling brook, Illinois home. That evening, her body was tied up with weights and pushed into the waters of the Chicago Sanitary and Shipping Canal near Romeoville. Based on eyewitness statements in the days following her death, volunteer civilian sonar search teams were dispatched to the canal to scan the riverbed. On November 19th, 22 days later, a human body was located. The sonar change images and location information was given to law enforcement personnel who initially classified it as some sort of landscaping debris. By the time recovery divers were dispatched days later, the water currents had already pushed the body further downstream. In the spring of 2008, so, you know, like six months later, the body was relocated, but due to the condition of the body at that time, it wasn't noticed in the images until a review of evidence months later. By the time law enforcement divers finally dove in May of 2009, the body had once again moved. So that was after the second time she seen her. With advances in sonar technology since 2009, my team recently deployed high-definition sonar to the area based upon calculations of the probable, <laughs> probable path of the body. The HD sonar identified a target. We were clearly able to see a human skull, rib cage, and the lower leg bones. Divers were sent down in the general area since pin put locations were not possible. They were unable to sift through the immense amount of silt and mud that covers the remains, but which our sonar can image through with the right conditions. So they're saying the sonar goes through the silt and mud. An ROV, which is a remote operated vehicle with sonar, was deployed in response to the inabilities of the divers. We got very lucky as for a moment, the thrusters on the ROV blew away the silt from around the body and we were clearly able to see a human skull with the lower jaw partially detached and shifted, as well as the neck and shoulder bones of the remains. Shown in the video just under and to the right of the black claw of the ROV. The attached photo shows a recreation of the event using an exact model of the ROV's claw arm and a medical training skull. So that's what this is. It's kind of showing you what it looked like. Okay. Well, what's that? I want to click on that video. Recovery with the ROV was not possible that day. Months later... After dragging their feet and allowing the bones to become covered in silt once more, law enforcement, because that would have been the time to get it. That would have been the time to get her when the silt was blown off and she was located. 
Law enforcement divers failed yet again to recover the victim's skeletal remains. My only remaining option is a somewhat new technique involving the deployment of divers with a handheld version of the HD sonar that gave us our initial success at locating the remains after so many years underwater. So basically like the one she got from Alaska for this last time, but handheld specifically for divers, or maybe I think she says with the sonar and a flip down screen that they can watch through their dive. Yes. So it's a handheld through their dive mask. My divers should be able to hover just above the silt without physically disturbing it and scan for the bones that have for too long eluded us. Once located, they can swim right on top of them, mark the exact point, and begin to remove the silt to make a recovery. Your help in this GoFundMe campaign will give us the funds needed to rent that handheld sonar equipment for approximately three weeks, train our divers at a controlled off-site facility, and then deploy them at our target area in the canal when weather and safety allow. Your help will help us bring my sister Stacy Peterson's remains home and give her a proper burial. Thank you all for your support. Cassandra Kells, sister of Stacy Peterson. So, yeah. Let me see what this video is. Okay, so this is when the ROV moved. And there goes some silt. And boom, skull right here. This right here is the spine. This is the right shoulder. And this is the left shoulder. Wow. It looks like there's something laying on top of her. So maybe they'll still be in that exact location then. It looks like, like a beam and a big rock. Mm. That's crazy. Mm. Yeah, it looks like something's laying on top of her. Mm -mm -mm. Wow. And kind of slant it kind of diagonally with the right shoulder up a little more. Hmm. That's so sad. All right, let's see. Now we are going to segue over to Caleb Harris. Because he's not getting much attention either, and I don't know why. I'm going to play my little short video about him. While I pull up all the other stuffs. This is Caleb Harris. He's 21 years old, brown hair, brown eyes. He's 5'11 and he weighs 180 pounds. 
The Corpus Christi Police Department is requesting the public's assistance in locating 21-year-old male Caleb Harris. According to a Snapchat ping, Caleb was last seen at approximately 2.45 a.m. on Monday, March 4, 2024, near his apartment complex. The cottages in the 1900 block of Ennis Jocelyn Road near the campus of Texas A&M University Corpus Christi in Corpus Christi, Texas, after letting his dog out. Caleb left behind his vehicle, keys, wallet, and ID. Caleb was wearing teal pants and a white shirt. Caleb's phone last pinged at 3 a.m. If you have any information regarding the whereabouts of Caleb Harris, please contact the Corpus Christi Police Department at 361-886-2840. I'm pretty sure I've seen Caleb Harris floating around the YouTube streets, um, but not very much, not as much as he should be, because this is really strange. Like, the way everything went down with this is really weird, so I wanted to go over the timeline and just, you know, make a quick video that I can reference back to later. Okay, it says, Corpus Christi Police gave a highly detailed breakdown of Caleb Harris' disappearance on Thursday, nearly three and a half weeks after the 21-year-old vanished. Corpus Christi Assistant Police Chief Todd Green, who was overseeing search efforts, spoke with three news reporter Bill Churchwell Thursday. He says they have interviewed Harris's roommates, friends, and family, and have poured over hours of surveillance camera footage. He says the investigation now moves from the very visible search to detective work behind the scenes, which is kind of what we just went through with the Sebastian Rogers case, right? They, they scaled back the search, and they focus more on the investigative part behind the scenes. I want the community to know we are still very actively involved in the investigation, Green said. It may not be as visible as it was the first week where you see officers out combing through fields and riding motorcycles and bikes and whatnot. Most of the investigation now is going on behind the scenes. It has to do with looking into digital data, forensic computer examinations, and things like that. Here is the timeline they provided to the media on Thursday. So this past Thursday. Evening hours. Caleb Paris played video games at his off-campus apartment at the Cottages on Ennis Jocelyn Road near South Padre Island Drive with his two roommates and a mutual friend. They played for more than an hour with another former classmate who currently lives in Colorado. Now, with most gaming platforms, if it's not a single-player game, you're going to have lobbies where other people from around the world are all in this same lobby together. So that's how they were in one place playing an online game with another friend that was all the way in Colorado. Okay, so that was the March 3rd was the gaming with the friends. March 4th at 12.56 a.m., a ring doorbell camera at a nearby apartment shows Harris, his friend, and one of Harris's roommates in the apartment complex parking lot playing with a puppy that belongs to the girlfriend of one of Harris's roommates. According to Corpus Christi Police, nothing appeared out of the ordinary. Harris and the two other young men then returned to the apartment. Let's watch this. Academy continuing our coverage this Friday night into the urgent search for Caleb Harris. Tonight, we're reviewing new video of the Island University student appearing to be from the last night that he was seeing. A ring camera capturing some of his last movements before his mysterious disappearance. So take a look here. Caleb can be seen in the parking lot at his off-campus apartment complex off of Ennis Jocelyn. Around look 1 a.m., he was with one of his roommates, a friend outside playing with a dog. Caleb's face visible as he looked toward the ring camera before they make their way back in the other direction on that night in early March. And the search for Caleb Harris now in its third week. Just yesterday, his parents offering a reward of $25,000 for his safe return. Now, to create a sense of urgency for anyone who may have information and hasn't come forward yet, a deadline of March 31st has been placed on that reward. You can call Crime Stoppers where you can remain anonymous. And we will, of course, continue to follow this story and update you with any new developments. Okay, so since they don't have the new developments, Jones and has the new developments. And the deadline for the reward has now been removed and the reward has gone up from 25 to 50,000. So at 2.20 a.m., the second of Harris's two roommates told Harris that he was headed to bed. Harris told the roommate he was gonna order snacks via Uber Eats for his school lunch on Monday. 2.44 a.m., Harris sent a Snapchat video to his younger sister. The video showed Harris walking the puppy through what appears to be the apartment complex parking lot. And there's the puppers. 3.03 a.m., Harris sent a Snapchat photo to a high school friend who lives in San Antonio. That photo showed a small bridge over a drainage ditch on the 1900 block of Ennis Jocelyn, within a few hundred feet of the entrance to his apartment complex. 3.12 a.m., Harris's cell phone last shared its location data with the nearest cell phone tower. 
3.20 a.m., the Uber Eats driver delivered Harris's order to his apartment. The order was left outside the front door as Harris had requested. March 4th, hours later, 11 a.m., one of Caleb Harris's roommates found the Uber Eats order outside the front door and saw Harris's pickup truck parked in front of the apartment. Harris's wallet and keys were in the apartment, but his cell phone was missing. The roommates called police to report Harris missing. Corpus Christi Police Department rules out suspects as Harris family remains confident in investigation. Thank you. Three News spoke to Caleb Harris's father, Randy Harris, by phone Thursday. He said he is 100% confident in Corpus Christi Police Department and what the department is doing to find his son. He said he is worried, though, about allegations, speculation, and misinformation spreading on social media. What's new? That's what these people do. They love to start rumors. They love to spread misinformation. Assistant Chief Green addressed some of that. Unfortunately, we can't tell the public everything we know in this investigation. It doesn't work that way, Green said. We're not able to be completely transparent Thank and share you, everything KCG. we know. But we can Thank very you. confidently say we have ruled out the roommates as having anything to do with this disappearance. His friends that he was communicating with that night over social media, we've ruled them out. We've ruled out the Uber driver that made the delivery. We have investigated very thoroughly all of those individuals. We wouldn't be doing our job if we didn't look at that possibility that they could have been Thank involved. Thank you, MS. And we've put a lot of work into initially, and we've crossed them off the list. So our next step is to continue forward and see what exactly happened to Caleb. Now, right there, you see it says something about the $25,000 reward and the deadline set for March 31st. That has, that has changed. The reward is up to $50,000, and the deadline has been removed. This pertains to the reward that has been upgraded. Anyone who comes forward with information on the whereabouts Any of the precious kind of southern gal Harris, who went missing on March 4th He's is beautiful. looking at an increased reward of $50,000. Where did Caleb Harris go? Like, they don't just disappear. Also, he was outside barefoot. They said he was barefoot in, in an article I was reading the other day. So if that's the case and if that's true, so he goes out to walk the dog. He's barefoot. He's he's that's the Snapchat video that he sent his sister where he was out in the apartment complex parking lot walking the dog. He was barefoot. Then he disappears and the dog goes back to the apartment. So the dog did the dog didn't disappear with him. The dog is safe and was found safe. So where did Caleb Harris go? It's crazy. You don't just vanish. They drained the drainage ditch under the bridge that was mentioned earlier. And there was nothing there. And it wasn't very deep anyways. I don't know. It's a mystery. But it's uh, it's one that I'm paying attention to. And I will give updates as I see them. Let's pray for Caleb Harris. And pray that he is found safe. Oh, all right. Let's go to the next one. And a 25,000. Search for missing college student Caleb Harris now enters its fourth week. And a $25,000 reward is now being offered for any information leading to where. So this was before the reward was raised. Where he could be. Police say the 21 year old Texas AM Corpus Christi student disappeared in the early morning hours of March 4th. Caleb's parents say he took his roommate's dog out for a walk, put the dog Look back how in the handsome. apartment, and at about 2 45 in the morning ordered Uber Eats. The food was delivered and placed on the doorstep, but Caleb never picked it up. Joining me now to give us the latest update in the search is Caleb's dad, Randy Harris. Uh, Randy, thanks once again for joining me. I'm so sorry. We're still having this conversation because it means Caleb isn't back home yet. Any weekend leads or updates you're able Thanks, to share? Thanks, Kate. Uh, not a whole lot. I mean, we're just working diligently uh, with the authorities and, and search groups and family and friends. And uh, today we'll be doing um, a lot of additional just door knocking. And uh, we've got uh, friends that have donated uh, their uh, helicopters. So I'm going to be up in a helicopter today doing some some aerial searches, hopefully some areas that we haven't been able to get to with, you know, four by fours or ATVs and, and boats. Hmm. Um, not a whole lot of direction just yet. We're still trying to find true north and uh, 
Uh, we're just hoping today we'll get some support. Well, it's just yeah, like his mama. I know it's all hands on deck and that police have recently expanded their search into your hometown, New Braunfels, San Antonio. Uh, but you, you're saying you don't even know enough to at least have an area of focus nearby land or even waterways? Not right, not right now. I mean, okay. I, we're, we're chasing every every single lead that comes in. Um, of course, we, we're offering the reward now, so that's hopefully beginning to bring in some some leads that we can at least you know go go look for. That's what we're that's our, what we're hoping. I also understand Caleb has been spotted in some surveillance video. Uh, can you share more with us about what that video and here? I'm gonna pause it for a second and I'm gonna drop the link to the Pascal show because I haven't seen much about Caleb Harris, but I did see Pascal going over it the other day. So, um, yeah, that's where you can catch some coverage as well. Tails, anything concerning in that footage that you saw? In that particular one, that was around 1 a.m. They were outside playing with the dog, you know, and, and we've, we've kind of mentioned that they were just this is him in the white shirt. And uh, that was a, a doorbell camera that caught them out at that just right there at the apartments. And which one is Caleb? Which in that video? Uh, the white shirt with the camera. The white on. shirt. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. What about phone pings? Anything from his phone records? Uh, just uh, just 244 uh, sending a, a snap to my, my daughter and then. Uh, Phone went off around 1258. There were some additional AT&T IP pings that uh, we, we've been really focused on uh, right there at his apartment. Oh, shit. I meant to try to catch that. Hold on. Because I wanted, is there not a way? And then pretty close to his apartment. Yeah, there is. As well. Okay. Hold just on, just on uh, right there at his apartment. Okay. The text he sent his sister said, Jenny, like the Force Gump Jenny, is the chillest dog ever not one peep yet it's been two hours since it's been here and it's eaten some eggs and sat in me blank and blanks oh because so he's saying and it sat in his lap and his two friends laps apartment and then pretty close to his apartment area as well we've been really focused on those because we feel like the phone was possibly there somewhere um but um and at this point, probably never find the phone because of the time frame that we're in. Yeah. But we're still, you know, we're still definitely uh, positive. And we have a, a map and a route there going of kind of those last movements with the phone pings. Uh, we've also learned Possibly. that when Caleb disappeared, he wasn't wearing shoes. He didn't have his wallet. Uh, he certainly wouldn't have been able to get very far on his own. Do you think Caleb asked for help from someone? Was he that type of person? Um. We don't know. We really don't know. Um, he is the kind of kid that would help somebody if they needed help. Mm. Um, so we, we really don't know. We don't know if he uh, came up on something and somebody needed help. And we, we just don't know. We don't have that direction. And, and that's why we're really, really uh, begging everybody that has security cameras in, in, in and around Corpus Christi and other areas, just take five minutes. Go, go back to that uh, 2.30 to 3.30 or 2.30 to 4 o'clock time frame and hey, look at your camera and see, see if we can find anything That's, in today's yeah. technology. There's got to be a... People don't just disappear. He's a 21-year-old boy. He goes out with the dog. He takes the dog out to potty and then never comes back. Like, But the dog comes back video out there somewhere yeah speaking of videos and just asking for other people to please come forward and help uh you're using social media to help in the search for finding your son how exactly are you using that help and, and what do you want people watching right now to to know um social media is great i mean everything from you know obviously facebook and and uh you know i've, I've posted stuff on some of my business uh linkedin pages um TikTok, Instagram, things like that. Uh, you know, we're just hoping that again, somebody sees something, somebody says something that would lead us to uh, a lead finding. Mm -hmm. Well, we are praying that your family gets answers. Uh, we'll continue to uh, keep. Okay, and we're at a month of him being missing. This is his GoFundMe. 
it's also a protected donation. Everything goes straight to his dad. Um, and this is police release a detailed timeline. Excuse me. Sorry. Nights and weekends. What is your message to the community at this point in y'all's investigation? Well, a couple. Um, the, the screenshot, the Snapchat messages were all about the dog. Well, thanks, Bill. Number one, uh, I want the community to know that we are still very actively involved in the investigation. It well, may not be as visible as it was the first. Southern gal, they said that the roommate said that he was going to bed and Caleb was like, cool, I'm going to get me some Uber Eats. And it was like Lunchables and stuff for him to take to school the next day with him. Um, so I'm assuming the roommate was already asleep by the time the Uber Eats got there. Week where you see officers out combing through fields and riding motorcycles and bikes and whatnot. Most of the investigation now is going on behind the scenes. It has to do with uh, looking into digital data, forensic, uh, computer examinations and things like that. Earlier this afternoon, I spoke with Caleb's dad uh, by phone. He told me that he was um, oh, 100% no, you're good, confident now. in CCPD and what you are doing to find his son. One thing that did concern him was all of the social media chatter out there, the disinformation that folks might be spreading, uh, the allegations that mo folks might be spreading, what would you like the, the community to know um, just about some of the details to help clear up some of those uh, misconceptions that are out there? Sure. Uh, social media can be a great tool for law enforcement, uh, especially in a search for, like this. We have reached out through our social media asking for people to submit any tips, any information they may have. But the other, you know, it's a two-sided sword. The other side of it is that people start speculating and making. We do, but it costs and, a lot uh, to get going it out off here. On tangents with information that they don't have, and unfortunately, we can't tell the public everything that we know in this investigation. It just doesn't work that way. Let's pause this for a second. Um, thank you, KCG, if you're still in here. I have seen your um, memberships. Thank you for gifting those. Welcome to. Thank you, babe. We're not able to be completely transparent and share everything that we know, uh, but we can very <laughs> confidently say we have ruled out the roommates as having anything to do with this uh, disappearance. His friends that he was communicating with that night uh, over social media, uh, we've ruled them out. Uh, we've ruled out the uh, the Uber driver that um, that uh, made the delivery. Uh, we have investigated very thoroughly all of those individuals. We wouldn't be doing our job if we didn't look at at that possibility that they could have been involved. But we've done that. And we've put put a lot of work into it initially, and we've crossed them off the list. So our next step is you know to continue forward and see you know, what exactly happened to Caleb. We thoroughly searched the apartment. Uh, the roommates were very cooperative with us. Uh, there were no signs of any struggle, any violence. Uh, Caleb's uh, had owned a couple of firearms, several firearms. They were all accounted for. The roommates owned firearms. They were accounted for. Um, the fishing gear, like I said, he was a very avid fisher, uh, fisherman, and there was some speculation that maybe he went to go scout a new fishing hole or something like that as odd as it seems at three in the morning but all his fishing gear was there his waders were there uh, you, so baby. there was nothing like that that would suggest uh, that he was you know had gone off on his own uh, for any great distance with the amount of attention a case like this gets uh, when hey, you Cash. are talking about a missing college student this is receiving national attention how do you handle 
the amount of maybe tips or Cash information money. coming in as a police department? Well, we set up a couple of uh, different venues where uh, there again, like I said, we try <laughs> to use social media to get help from the public. We've made that outreach. Uh, we've given them several numbers to call. We've uh, suggested uh, Crime Stoppers is one of the uh, one of the ways that they can submit anonymous tips if they don't want to be identified. There's also a tip line that the family has set up along with a reward. Uh, those tips come to us. We review those tips and for viability to see if they're uh, something that we should be following up on immediately or something that can be delayed, but we review all of them. So, so far we probably got in uh, around 50 tips all together, maybe, maybe more than that, uh, through the several different ways uh, that we're getting them. At this point in the investigation, do you, are you looking locally or are you also looking outside of the area for any uh, information coming in? We haven't ruled out anything at this point. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Certainly, we started the search immediately right around where he lived, where he was last seen and where, you know, the social media uh, or social media, where the uh, digital information from his phone indicated where he was last. Uh, we've expanded that search um, in in ways of reaching out to people that had spoken to him on the phone, things like that. Uh, but no, we haven't limited ourselves and we won't limit ourselves uh, until we know exactly where he is. I know there's been a lot of chatter on social media, you know, but uh, regarding his last ping, uh, possibly at a nearby business, what would you like to tell the community, of course, of what y'all have learned? You know, initially we were in, a, it was a very urgent situation where we were trying to get information back from the cell phone providers and try to get that information really quickly and analyze it quickly. And as a result, uh, I think there was some bad information that it, that it tended to show uh, that his phone was uh, pinging uh, miles away from where the where he lived or where he was last seen. Um, I think as we've progressed in the last couple of weeks and reanalyzed that information and gathered more information from the cell providers, uh, the working theory we have right now is that that last ping was probably right either in the complex or out on the street right in front of the complex. It's an evolving investigation. And Okay, so if it was like, I don't understand. That's a big dude to be just kidnapping. That could change based on the, the information that we continue to get back from the, the providers, from the, the, um, the, the social media. Uh, applications and whatnot that he had on his phone and on his computer. So it, it's potentially could change. But right now, that's we feel pretty confident about that right now. Do you still need people in the community, of course, if they might have any doorbell camera, ring camera, blink cameras, anything yeah. like that? How much does that help out in, in an investigation like this? Oh, it's uh, tremendous. Un unfortunately, the night he disappeared, it was extremely foggy. And the video that we've collected already, we've already collected, uh, uh, gone to over 50 businesses and uh, different uh, residents, private residences, and co uh, collected video. Of the 50 that we've been to, we've collected, uh, I believe, 27 different sources of video. Um, the, the problem with that is a lot of it is very difficult to, um, to see because it was so foggy that night. But it is valuable to us. We're using it. So to answer your question, yes. If there are... So what if he was hit? I think on another interview with this uh, chief, he said that they looked into the possibility of him being hit, but there was no evidence of him being hit. No shattered glass, no shattered taillights, headlights, like nothing. No blood. So could he have been hit, but not really bleed? Yes. I mean, I guess anything's possible. Could he be hit without shattering something on the car? I don't think so. If there's anybody certainly within that complex that has doorbell camera that, from that evening that they think uh, would be useful to us or anywhere in the surrounding area, we're, we're still looking and we'll continue to look. We're, uh, we've got people out today looking. I did. Of video, course they won't. Video sources. Maybe not all video. Right there in that area, but um, the surrounding area. It's ongoing, but we believe the last place that he was seen that we can definitively say he was at is okay, near that bridge right in front of the apartment complex. And there again, because it was so foggy that night. Oh, shit. See, this thing's quick. Oh, it puts the play. Ugh. But this was his last Snapchat. 
and it was at the bridge he was walking the dog and it was at the bridge this is the bridge that i mentioned in that short video where they drained is the drainage bridge and they drained it because it was up a little bit and there was nothing there that he was at is near that bridge right out in front of the apartment complex and there again because it was so foggy that night one of the initial thoughts was maybe he got hit by a car and but we searched that area so well there was no i know look at it i see it now i was like uh, cope i was like what no blood no you know nothing that would they would there's so many people out there who are helping uh, search (laughs) volunteers who are out there you know people coming in from outside the city to help in those search efforts what advice do you have for them to stay safe while they are searching i was out with a small group of people yesterday and they were going through some pretty difficult elements the mud uh, the brush and so and they were coming across some homeless encampments as well you know first of all i think it's incredible the the response that has come from our community, uh, Caleb's community, New Braunfels oh, and San Antonio, okay. his friends, the university. It- that's the one you were talking about then. Uh, yeah, that's when he took the dog out for a walk and they said he was barefoot. So he was planning on just like walking the dog right out there. Like, cause it seems like he was walking on pavement the whole time. So he was just walking the dog and that was the last Snapchat. Oh, like it's crazy. It's crazy. People don't just disappear. It's it's really an incredible uh, thing to see from our standpoint that that many people are willing to take time out of their day and go out and search for this young man. It's just it's an incredible uh, a thing to see from from law enforcement side. To answer your question, we want them to be uh, as cautious as possible and, and use as much safety techniques and safety tactics as they can. The brush around here is heavy. It's thick. You can easily uh, you know cut yourself. There's broken glass. There's there's all kinds of things. Fish hooks in a lot of these areas that they're going around in, and also uh, venomous snakes. We have we have. Uh, uh, rattlers and uh, water moccasins and things like that in those areas. So they need to be very cautious when they're doing those searches. Additionally, one of the things that we uh, we saw was uh, that I have seen on social media is going down into uh, enclosed areas like culverts, enclosed drainage pipes, things like that. Our dive team, when they did their search, they actually have equipment uh, that, that we use along with the fire department to detect uh, uh, dangerous gases. And uh, we were actually told, do not go in that drainage ditch uh, or that one drainage culvert, uh, enclosed culvert, because uh, there could be methane gas and whatnot in there. So we would certainly encourage them to be very cautious if they have any of that type of uh, safety equipment available to test before they go in there, because we'd hate to see another tragedy with people that are doing the right thing for the right reason. And we would certainly hate to see anybody get hurt or, you know, or seriously injured. There are a few other missing person cases as well that, that are still open. Um, but when, when you have cases like this or when you have an investigation like this, do you add more uh, people to focus on that investigation? Or is it a department wide type of deal where everyone kind of gets involved? Uh, well, in this particular situation, uh, the circumstances are so were so unusual. The circumstances here were very unusual from the beginning. Um, the, our investigators, our detectives, got involved very quickly. Where normally uh, there's a time period before they start getting actively involved, uh, as actively involved. That's not saying we're not doing anything. We immediately put out bolos, be on the lookouts for people that are missing. That that happens immediately as soon as the the first officer gets there and, and determines that yeah, there's enough um, to um, to substantiate this person's missing. That happens immediately. So then every well, I mean. A grown ass dude goes missing. I think also they said that they um in that one article they cleared the roommates as well as the Uber driver. Um so I know I've heard I can't remember if it was on Pascal or if I seen it on Reddit, but them talking about maybe like a setup by the Uber driver. But he made it very clear. He 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 took the time to make it very clear that the Uber driver has been cleared. And so has the roommates. Every officer in the city is looking for that individual. And if they come across them um, just routinely, you know, the dispatchers will let them know, hey, that's a missing person you're talking to. And uh, and we do that. So but in this case, it was much different. So immediately we started getting a lot of people involved. Uh, we uh, had detectives <laughs> out there. we recruited um, cash uh, search and rescue. We recruited <laughs> I say recruited them. We reached out to them. <laughs> to assist in the search. We did a massive search around the immediate area. Um, we brought in our uh, forensic um, computer examiners uh, to download his laptop. Um, we brought in analysts, crime analysts to go out and start searching for um, surveillance video, for ring camera video and, and, and whatnot. I know there's, a, there's been several in social media suggesting that uh, we've had several missing persons of the same age and males and that you know there, there appears to be you know maybe some kind of conspiracy or something going on early on in the investigation we went back and reviewed all of the uh, missing persons reports for the last three years to look to see if there was any connection now there are some similarities and there's some similarities caleb was an avid fisherman avid hunter um we've had a couple other missing persons where it's similar they're avid fishermen or avid hunters but there was nothing that we found that showed any type of a connection and uh, the analogy i would make is 
if you had four or five missing young men from Breckenridge, Colorado, it probably wouldn't be a surprise to find out that they were all avid um, skiers, right? Because because the area we live in, there's a lot of young men and they like to fish, they like to hunt. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's connected. It's just, okay, they have kind of the same interests. And, and that's pretty much what we found. Earlier, I had mentioned <clears> that we spoke with Caleb's dad and he said he was 100% confident in CCPD mm -hmm. that you guys are doing everything you can to find his son. Are you confident in the department and the work you guys are doing to find Caleb? I'm very confident. This guy uh, kind of looks like him. Kevin Bacon, don't it? Don't he? No, I'm thinking that is very possible. What if, what if it wasn't a hard enough hit to, you know, shatter the glass or break the headlights or, you know what I'm saying? Like, is that possible to me in my mind? Yes. Uh, it's always possible. Don't he look like Kevin Bacon? Where's mama? Is mama in here? Copacetia, yeah. foot loose. Mama, if you're in here, you're probably the, not. The work that's being done behind the scenes. We have some very talented people. Out there. They're not <laughs> out on, you know, driving around in a patrol car. They're behind the scenes going through computer data, uh, issuing search warrants for uh, digital information. Uh, subpoenas, yeah, trimmers. Um, all those types of things. It's not a glamorous job, uh, but they're doing incredible work. And then just the the amount of sharing that's going on right now between us. Uh, we have uh, U.S. Marshals assisting us. We have the FBI assisting us. We have the Texas Rangers assisting us. And there's no egos going on. Everybody's sharing information. Everybody's working. Nah, I know what him dirty. Look, he looks uh, just like him. That's his twin. This young man. I thought I heard Cash say he wanted to watch uh, Nancy Grace. Is that what I heard Cash say? Because <laughs> she covered it too. I'm not going to play it all though. Minutes. How can just 20 minutes change your whole life? How does a boy step outside barefoot to get his Uber Eats and he's never seen again. She's so damn dramatic. Did somebody say Nancy Grace? Lord Jesus, fix it. I'm trying to get rich before I leave about this bitch. I'm trying to have things, but it's hard for a pimp. But I'm praying and I'm hoping to God I don't slip. Yeah. Yeah, no, when he's trying to get <laughs> oh my god first off he didn't step out to get the uber eats he stepped out to walk the dog the uber eats their thinking came afterwards lord have mercy look at her look at that dramatic of it let's watch that again let's put her in big mode here you go cash i got it for you baby change your whole life how does a boy, all right, Cash, you watching, step outside barefoot to get his Uber Eats and he's never seen again? <laughs> I shouldn't laugh at it. Poor, that poor baby, Caleb Harris, man. But she is too much. She, she is too much. <laughs> Oh, here's the link to <laughs> KCG. That's so funny. There's the link. <laughs> oh, man. We're not going to watch it. I just wanted to show y'all that. Um, Let's see. <laughs> um, I feel like she probably did pageants as a kid. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Okay, so now we're going <laughs> to we're going to segue over to the next thing, which is Sebastian Rogers. Um, I don't really um 
it's not really it's still nancy grace okay so hear me out um i have more that i want to go over with pertaining to sebastian rogers um like i want to go over the responses like at the end of every fuck it we'll do it now hold on I am Eric Craddock, ERIC. I also have Libby Sunder County Emergency Camps. Sebastian, we are exploring every lead that comes in and every tip that comes in. Um, as I said before, the investigation remains ongoing. The entire community is deeply saddened by what has occurred. We're all extremely concerned for Sebastian's welfare. I want to encourage the community to stay vigilant, to report anything that they think may be of some significance to the investigation, no matter how minute it may appear to be to you. Please call 1-800-TBI-FIND with any tips or the Sunder County Emergency Communication. Hey, Angel. Thanks for coming by, love. We understand the anxiety and the concern that this case has caused in the community. We too share the anxiety and concern for Sebastian. I want to reiterate that we are doing everything we can to find Sebastian and bring him home. Despite the passage of time, the commitment to finding Sebastian remains unwavering. I said this when we scaled the search back. Our commitment to finding Sebastian remains. We will continue to investigate every possible lead that comes in. The Summer County Sheriff's Office wants to express our gratitude to the community and the many individuals who have helped in the search, the many individuals who have called in tips, the many individuals who have printed flyers and kept Sebastian's face in the news. Nothing would be, uh, nothing would make me happier than to wake up tomorrow morning with a tip that cracks this case wide open and we find Sebastian and bring him home. Uh, at this time, I'll turn it over to Susan Island from the TBI. Hi, good morning. Thanks for being here. Um, we wanted to, we know how invested everybody is in the search for Sebastian, in finding out what happened to him and bringing him home. And we want to let everybody know he has not been forgotten. Nobody's forgotten about him. Nobody has given up looking for him. Uh, at the beginning of this investigation, there was a large uh, land search for him. Um, it was very visible. There were also waterways, lakes, ponds that were searched. Um, there were aerial searches with helicopters and drones and fixed wing planes. They were done at night. They were done on weekends. They were done during the day. Um, that was very visible. And it was something everybody was able to see. But we want to let you know that even though there is not that high visibility in investigating this case that we are not done. This is, it's gone back to what could be considered good old fashioned police work. Um, interviewing individuals, re-interviewing individuals, checking out leads, rechecking leads. Um, we have been working with other law enforcement agencies who have had in other jurisdictions who have perhaps had some complex cases of their own that they worked on to uh, get tips from them. We have um, had, you know, this day of, of technology with everyone, ha everyone having cell phones and doorbells and ring bells and surveillance cameras. Um, that, as you can imagine, has been a bit of a chore to be able to collect all those and then review them. It's, it's important so we know what's out there. Um, we have been reviewing that, re reviewing it again. Um, we have had other agencies involved. The FBI has been helpful in that. Um, Secret Service has also been helpful in that. Um, so we are just trying to do whatever we can to keep advance the, the uh, investigation. It has not gone to a place where anybody has forgotten about him or is not pursuing this. The parents have been cooperative throughout at the beginning of the investigation. Um, they have pretty much done whatever law enforcement has asked of them. Um, at, at this point, we don't have any evidence. There is not any kind of an indication that there is a criminal element involved. Um, but we are keeping options open. We don't know what has happened. We don't know where Sebastian is right now. So we are pursuing any and all avenues. Um, we do want to caution some, uh, there are some media, social media elements out there who purport to have information that is direct from the investigation. Um, I just want to reiterate that that is not the case. Um, the, if some of the information- that There's a reason we're going through this, okay? There's a reason we're going through the press conference. We don't want this to damage- Hang the in there. So we would just caution anyone who is following the case to just use some caution as to what you see and what you believe. Um, it, it's caused a bit of a distraction because a lot of what has been out there in some of the social media channels has been rumors and speculations and theories, and some of that has been advanced and people have caught a hold of it as if it's what's really happening. Um, that has resulted in us getting information that is either, you know, like I said, distracting, it's uh, taking away time and effort from what the agency, agencies need to be doing as far as looking for Sebastian. Um, we have had so far, uh, as of this morning, 314 tips that have come in through the tip line. It's been mentioned, but I'll say it again, it's 1-800-TBI-FIND. We are also taking tips through email, which is tips, uh, I'm sorry, tips to TBI, T-O, TBI, at TBI. Me too, Bye -bye. Southern gal. Um, what's next? We want people, as Chief Deputy said, to continue to remain vigilant get uh, vigilant, um, get Sebastian's picture out there, continue to share his picture, his information. Um, now that it's getting to be nicer, well, not, not today with the weather, but now that the weather has turned warmer, people may be more um, 
inclined to be in their yards. If you go out and see anything that looks different, let us know. Something where perhaps a teenager could have hidden. Um, if you have a, a large amount of property in the area or something that has any kind of holes or unstable footing or ledges where, again, where a teen could have gone to hide or to play, um, and you don't feel comfortable checking it out, let us know. We'll get somebody from law enforcement to go out there with you or to uh, check it out themselves. Um, we just want to make sure that every stone is unturned, that there's no stone left unturned, that we want people to make sure that we are looking everywhere we can. We do want to continue to get the tips, but please make it, don't, don't provide information that you might have seen through social media channels. Um, if you have information about Sebastian, about conversations you might have had with him, things he likes to do, places he likes to go, any people he may have mentioned that are in his life, um, that could be helpful in finding out maybe what he was interested in. Finally, uh, we want to thank the community. We want to thank the media. You guys have been really good about keeping his name in the public's eye. Um, that's really important. Um, and thank you for your diligence in providing that information out there. Not that I've seen dates. Said, we also want to thank the community um, from the very first day. Everybody has really been all in as far as whatever they can do to help in the search, to help pass information on. I'll check um, real quick. Providing water for the, the teams that were out conducting the brown searches. So thank you again to everybody. Um, I'm going to pass it back to you. Your credit. The weather is rolling in. We've got time for some questions. So yes, ma'am. There is no evidence to support foul play is involved in the disappearance of Sebastian. So at this point, you don't rule it out? We're not ruling anything out. So five weeks, and you guys have so much ground, um, searching, going back, researching, um, checked out every case of a possible sighting, nothing confirmed, not a trace of Sebastian anywhere, nothing found. No footprints, no video, nothing. Nothing that is uh, taking us to locate Sebastian. And are there any working theories? We come up with theories almost daily and try and investigate and make sure that we're doing everything we can to find Sebastian. Share any of those? No, sir. I think the TBI said it best. They've been nothing but cooperative with law enforcement since day one of this investigation. There is no evidence to support foul play on the part of Sebastian's parents. Does that mean that it's interfering at all with your investigation or is it changing about the way the avenue has been taken? No, sir. So you mentioned uh, in your last update that in uh, with your son and rumors that didn't seem to have the validity that there were glasses found within the past few days. Can you confirm that? There were some glasses found in the past few days. Where have you been able to identify them for Sebastian? We are still investigating. The Cajun Navy is operating independently. They have not reached out to us. One of the things that I really appreciate they've done is print flyers and keep Sebastian's face out there. Uh, it's my hope that one day somebody sees something and calls in and this case breaks wide open and we find Sebastian. No updates. No, sir. They would have to call the police and report them. My hope and prayer is that Sebastian is still alive, yes. Uh, we're going to continue to work on this investigation follow up every tip and lead that comes in. Uh, some of this may revert back to us going over some things that we've already done for the sixth, seventh, or eighth time. Uh, a fresh set of eyes never hurt anything. We're, we're going to continue to work to find Sebastian. Has the story been changed at all, or do you think they talked to people every night for a second by possible? There is no evidence to support foul play. Uh, are there any active corrections that you have to report? We have tips called in daily. And this tip seems legitimate enough to expand public law enforcement resources? Regardless of their legi legitimacy, we're going to follow up on it. I'm, I'm certain there will be. You met with the uh, biological father and mother this past week. Um, is that their request, your request? Um, is that just me interviewing them again? That was at the request of law enforcement. Uh, we, it's not uncommon to talk to the family in investigations like this. I've got time for one more question. Just, just overall, how has this investigation impacted the law at your department, especially with all the changes coming along? Let me put it to you like this. If my kid was missing, this is the team I'd want on it. Uh, the men and women of the Summer County Sheriff's Office, of the Tennessee Bureau of Investigations, the FBI partners, the other local agencies, the Secret Service, everyone who's had a hand in this case is doing everything they can to find Sebastian. Morale's high. We are here and we are dedicated. Thank you all for being here today. Thank you for keeping Sebastian okay. in the public. Please continue. So now we are going to, I thought, you know, it would be really cool to do the presser, right? But then to also show the bad actors responses to the presser i have not watched any of these what i did was i found them not even just the bad actors there's a few in here that aren't bad actors but i just wanted to see kind of like what their thoughts were after they heard the presser and so i went and found exactly where they stopped the presser some of them were difficult, like Bullhorn. She was in and out in between the pressers. So, but the first one, 
we're going to watch is Dolly. I, I have no idea how people took them, if they were going to heed, take heed to what they're asking from the public, from social media, from YouTubers, like, are the YouTubers going to stop? Of course not. But I just want to see what their um, opinions were. The raging Cajuns. They ain't even talk. They ain't coordinated nothing with the police. The police are out there doing the searching. Their investigators are out there doing the work. Okay? He said, don't give up hope. Morale is high. Glasses found. Possibly his. This boy is somewhere and somebody knows something. I agree with you 100%. So if you're just tuning in, we're going to run that back. So if you missed any of this, you have a chance to see it. All right, let's kick into it again. And yes, they found glasses. It's a criminal element involved, um, but we are keeping options open. We don't know what has happened. We don't know where Sebastian is right now. So we are pursuing any and all avenues. Um, we do want to caution some, uh, there are some media, social media elements out there who purport to have information that is direct from the investigation. Um, I just want to reiterate that that is not the case. Um, okay, KCG. That is being provided. I'll know you're here, girl. Is inaccurate, incomplete. Not on Dolly. I don't want this to damage the We're all speculation. Listen, nothing here is to be taken as fact. Do your own research. This is for entertainment purposes. I just want you to know that for legal reasons. Investigation. So we would just caution anyone who is following the case. Interesting. Some caution. Interesting. Provided on some of the social media channels is inaccurate, incomplete. Not on Dolly. I don't want this to damage. Yeah, on Dolly. <laughs> We're all speculation. Listen, nothing here is to be taken as fact. Do your own research. This is for entertainment purposes. I just want you to know that for legal reasons. If I'm not mistaken, Seth has said somewhere that uh, this this is hearsay, so take it with a grain of salt. But if I'm not mistaken, Seth said that they were confirmed not to be Sebastian's class. So we would just caution anyone who is following the case to just use some caution as to what you see and what you believe. Um, it, it's caused a bit of a distraction because a lot of what has been in some of the social media truck channels has been rumors and speculations and theories, and some of that has been advanced, and people have caught a hold of it as if it's what's really happening. Um, that has resulted in us getting information that is either, you know, like I said, distracting. It's uh, taking away time and effort from what the agencies agencies need. See, Dolly, you just said yourself, you, th th this is a speculation channel. She's saying your speculation is wreaking havoc on this investigation. <laughs> Not just yours, but everybody's. Need to be doing as far as looking for Sebastian. Um, we have had so far, uh, as of this morning, 314 tips that have come in through the tip line. It's been mentioned, but I'll say it again. It's 1-800-TBI-FIND. We are also taking tips through email, which is um, what's next. We want people, as Chief Deputy said, to continue to remain diligent. That's a know, huge um, topic. I didn't know he played through the presser twice, so this is news to me. Just hang with me. Um, get Sebastian's picture out there. Continue to share his picture, his information. Um, now well, I needed a big cup of coffee for this line today, waiting on this big old nothing burger. But let's, let's be honest. We did get a little slice of cheese, the glasses, but they didn't determine if the glasses were his. They didn't, you know, we don't know exactly... So we, we really got nothing but a little slice of something to talk about. That's it. Yeah, a little slice of something to speculate about. <laughs> Damn. I mean, at least he's honest with it, I guess. Not, not today with the weather, but now that the weather has turned warmer, people may be more um, inclined to be in their yards. If you go out and see anything that looks different, let us know. Something where perhaps a teenager could have hidden. Um, if you have a large amount of property in the area or something that has any kind of holes or unstable footing or Moldy. ledges Moldy where, again, where a teen could have gone to hide or to play. Um, Thank you, you perfectly. Out, let us know. We'll get somebody from law enforcement to go out there with you or to uh, check it out themselves. Um, we just want to make sure that every stone is unturned, that there's no stone left unturned, that we want people to make sure that we are looking everywhere we can. We do want to continue to get the... We're not ruling anything out. Okay, right there. Make it clear. <laughs> Thank you. There is no evidence to support foul play in the ball in the history of the smash. At this point, you don't rule it out. We're not ruling anything out. Okay, right there. Make it clear. It, they, ain't, they ain't suspects right this second. Okay, the parents, they're not. But if something happens and something changes, they will be. Okay? Not they will be. They could be. They could be if something changes. But for now, they're not. So speculation station why? They're saying, hey, they probably didn't do it. They're giving you the, you know, and maybe I think this is important because the internet 
has been going at these people really, really hard. And, and my question today is, should we lighten the load up on, on the heat, the pressure on these people? Because the internet, what it does, uh, Brandon said it was Seth's question to answer, and I don't believe Seth is here, Dolly. Okay, well, we'll get a hold of Seth, right? Summons the man. Okay, I don't know. Anyway, we'll, we'll get with Seth. We'll figure it out. We'll get him, Seth to talk about it. But that's a little bit of what we got here is, you know, there's the parents seem to be, I ain't going to say cleared, but the police are not directly looking at them. They don't. Well, that's what, I mean, Proudfoot said cleared, but I think this is what he meant. Like, they're, they're not tripping on the parents right now. And who are we to put pressure on them to the point, to this extent, like with no, nothing being known yet. Don't have anything to make them believe it's them at this point in time, but the internet, oh no, the internet ain't so quick to be like that. No, the internet, the internet is full of people that want the clicks, the views, the money, and also just bored people, bored women, bored old women. Who just want to uh, gossip? The, uh, the, I don't know any other way to put it. They just want to gossip. It's like a Tupperware party online. Looks at every little inconsistency, your behavior. I would, you know, they could ask them, "What about the parents' behavior?" You know, but they kind of touched on that that they're cooperating, they're doing everything the police say. But here's the thing: they wouldn't be the first people to cooperate with the police and have done it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Other people cooperate with the police and, and unalive somebody. So it ain't like, oh, just because you cooperate with the police don't mean you didn't do it. You could no. be lying to the police thinking you smarter than them. Yeah, they sure could. Let the police figure it out. You know, damn Ted Bundy cooperated with the police. So five weeks and that's sure. covered so much ground. Um, searching, going back and researching. Um, check out every case of a possible. It's like a little rumor report to clear. Since day one of this investigation, there is no evidence to support foul play on the part of Sebastian Ferris. But you notice he didn't answer the question. Did you check their alibi? Oh my God. Because this will stop a lot of speculation on the internet. Some of these questions. Dolly, <laughs> Dolly let it go, bro. <laughs> I mean. He said, I think he had TBI. But the second part of the question was, have you checked their. Did you hear? TBI said it best. They've been nothing but cooperative with law enforcement. Except but he didn't answer. Almost daily. And try and investigate and make sure that we're doing everything we can to find Sebastian. I think the TBI said it best. They've been nothing but cooperative with law enforcement. But he didn't answer. Did they clear the alibi? Did you hear? He didn't answer it. Okay. Here he asked a two part question, but the cop, the sheriff dude, he only heard one part of the question. He said, I think he TBI. But the second part of the question was, have you checked their alibis? Well, duh, they've checked their alibis, but, oh, Lord. Since day one of this investigation, there is no evidence to support foul play on the part of Sebastian Ferris. But you notice he didn't answer the question. Did you check their alibi? Did you see video of Chris Proudfoot? Because this will stop a lot of the speculation on the Internet. Some of these questions are really important because, you know. In case or y'all could just be responsible for your own actions. <gasps> yes. Yes, let's be responsible for our own actions. Cases like this, I've seen other police departments put out like a rumor report. Like it, you can go to their Facebook page and maybe they can learn from this. It'll tell you what the <laughs> Internet's been saying and it'll tell you that that was a rumor. Right. It's like a little rumor report to clear up to make sure there ain't a whole bunch of misinformation out there on the Internet. And then you run into all these crazy problems with people speculating, and making up all the crazy things about the family and, and things like that. If you clear the rumors up, then people have more to go with. All right, but when you when you shut down and don't say nothing to the public, we live in an internet era, and we want to know. Right, deeds. Uh, it's about I think. Because mom, they, they know her alibi, right? But the question was asked about the other two alibis, not just Seth's, not just Proudfoot's. Thank you, baby. Mm -hmm. I love you. I just see, this is why I wanted 
to see how everybody responded to the presser because most everybody I'm going to show has kind of taken part in the speculation and the bullshit. Or some glasses found in the past few days. Or have you been able to identify them or not? We are still investigating. In the meeting, uh, Penny Fallon's there. How was that working happening at Fallon's there for a couple of years? The Cajun Navy is operating independently. They have not reached out to us. Have you done your investigation with their work hustle or have it been working? I really appreciate they've done is print flyers and keep Sebastian's face out there. Uh, it's my hope that one day somebody sees something and calls in and this case breaks wide open and we find Sebastian. They claim they just use threats. Your knowledge base is probably going to be some reports or reports to the Sheriff's Department documenting any of these types of threats? No, sir. Or is there anything about what those threats are? They would have to call the police and report them. Listen at all these questions about the UCN, like... My hope and prayer is that Sebastian is still alive. Yes. Uh, we're going to continue to work on this investigation, follow up every tip that we that comes in. Okay. Does he? Okay. I'm going to open the phone lines for Brandon. Give me one second. Nobody else called a phone line. I opened them for Brandon to call in. So, phone lines open, Brandon. But, guys, don't. For the sixth, seventh, or eighth time. Uh, first set of eyes, never heard anything. Have tips called in daily. Any other agents? That was at the request of law enforcement. Uh, we okay, that, that don't. That's a little different than what Seth said because he said he asked to see it, but he said they were called in by law enforcement. Thanks, Dolly and PJ, for the time. Uh, thank you so much. Let me put it to you like this: the Bureau of Investigations, the FBI partner. We are here and we are dedicated. Thank you all. So you heard him say, you know, basically that the uh, the raging Cajuns wasn't working with the police. They haven't made any police reports. That. That's what you first think of when the presser's over? The Cajun Navy? Okay. He wants them to hand out flyers. Wow, that was like a big boom. That's why I like this guy. You know, listen, um, it's important for the public to get out there and help, you know. And this person is trying to make it where the public couldn't help, and these guys are professionals. No, the people you just seen on the stage, they're the professionals. All right, they're the professionals. Right, I agree. I agree. So let's follow their lead. And the public, we do what they say to help them. Do we or do y'all continue to speculate? Because I think I seen you live earlier taking phone calls, speculating and shit. That's just facts. Um, but if 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 the raging if the raging cages need some flyers, <laughs> you know, I'll for you. I'll happily donate some flyers <laughs> to you guys. But when you walk up to get them, I'm gonna cuss you out. Okay. All right, I'm going to cuss you out when you walk up to get these handful of flyers. I'm going to be like, you want these? You piece of shit. You know, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'd be a lot nicer and a little bit more professional when people came up to get the flyers. I'd be like, here you go. Thank you. Thank you for coming to get these flyers. That's awesome of you. You wasn't there to get flyers. You was there to stream. Raging Cajuns, you know. But you see, the professionals, said the professionals the police, the TDI, the FBI, the Secret Service. This better be clean. Dolly. Hello. Hey, it's Brandon. Hey, what's up, Brandon? No, not much, brother. Did you have some info on the glasses? Yeah, so it was. So I'm uh, helping Seth lead the search uh, on Seth's part. Uh -huh. um, we did find glasses yesterday. Um, they do look very similar to Sebastian's, um, almost identical. Um, but we, we can't tell if they are actually Sebastian's or not. At first, Seth thought they was, but after we got them to our command post in person, they, they did look a little bit smaller than what is on Sebastian's face. Uh huh. Where were those glasses found at? Um, that I will let Seth say. Um, it, it don't look good where they were found, um, but they were. I can say they were not found near Katie's house. Okay, so they were in proximity of the house. No, they were not. They were not found at nowhere near her house. Oh, no, they were near, near the house. Okay, no, not hers. No. And you can't tell. They appear to be smaller, maybe. They they do appear to be smaller than what is on on Sebastian's face, but you can't really tell either from a picture because sometimes pictures make things look a little bigger. So yeah, yeah, that's um, absolutely true. Just, yeah, they're they're gonna that's gonna have to be researched and and go to where. Yeah, and I think since this, uh, perfectly said it earlier that Seth said that these are not his glasses. Or Sebastian got his glasses done at to see if they are you know what I'm saying or his. What day were these found on? Yesterday. Yesterday. Okay. Yep. So Seth was out searching himself, ran, ran across them, um, turned, turned them over to the police. Um, so I had sent a, a, a 
I've been caught on camera. So we got a big old nothing burger, Doug. Yeah, but I just got a feeling these, you know, these people are crazy. I mean, they'll snatch your kids up. You need to keep your eye on your kid 24 7 and, and stay in small crowds. Don't get in big crowds. Yeah, I'm starting to thank the family. I'm, I'm starting to think they might not have nothing to do with it, Doug. <laughs> now? Okay. Okay, listen, that's a little of a difference there. I will give credit where it's due. Yes, my guy. Like, it's very, that's all we want is for them to not be being condemned for nothing. What if they really didn't have anything to do with it? So that's the fact that he even jokes around like this and says it's kind of got me, you know, not so much thinking the parents had anything to do with it. That is, that's progress. That's a little bit of progress because that put that little bit of doubt in his mind about the parents will it stop the speculation probably not you know i mean anything. let's go forward and see I'd say that they believe his belt would have held his pants on uh they're talking they've about never right. been to the states one of them pulled up a map because she got the name latimer and she said i don't know what that is a road something there's like a latimer state park uh -huh. there's also a latimer bridge which she went on google maps and we were searching and there it was a bridge on a road, or the name of the bridge, is Latimer. Somebody also said, responded on there, that, that the mom and Chris, when they went to Mississippi, they were staying in a place called Latimer. Anyway, it's like too much detail. He's not buried under the ground, like that guy who keeps digging. Oh my okay. god, okay, yeah, no, we're stopping right fucking there. Are you kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? See, that's that shit. They said they want y'all to stop. Wow, that just angered me. Wow. All right, moving right along because we're not going to entertain that. We're going to see what Bullhorn has to say about it. it it's... What do we do? She's having Everything audio trouble. Despite the passage of time, the commitment to finding Sebastian remains unwavering. I said this when we scaled the search back. Our commitment to finding Sebastian remains. We will continue to express our gratitude. Well, not well, well. Nothing would make me happy. Hi, good morning. We want to let everybody know he has not been for I, the beginning of this I'm investigation. Sorry. There was a large uh, land search. No offense. For him. No offense. No offense. No offense. Nobody has. Given, we want to let everybody know he has not been forgotten. Nobody's forgotten about him. Nobody has given up looking for him. You know uh, what? At the beginning of this I'm investigation, sorry. there was a large uh, land search. No offense. For him. No offense. No offense. No offense to law enforcement. But that means I'm all offense. We haven't forgotten about him. We're not giving up on him. Uh, I got to be honest with you. I, I got to be honest with you. We heard that with Summer Wells. We heard that with all these other uh, audios better now. Yeah, I just made some adjustments. We just heard all of this once before. We heard all of this before. Girl, you don't even have Sebastian on your wallpaper. What? You don't even have Sebastian on this <clears throat> thumbnail for the Sebastian Rogers press conference. So you got all these other kids. You got Elijah up here. It, it's not. You got Layla and Summer and uh, Maddie. To me, it's not giving me comfort um, when we're talking about a 15 year old boy that's been gone for a month and there's literally not even a single freaking scent of him. It's as if his whole entire being disintegrated and then blew away. There's not even a scent, folks. We're going to get to that in just a second. But I, 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 I'm sorry, I don't mean to be a jerk, but I'm tired of hearing that statement from TDI. Like TBI at this point for me, her audio is sounding like a sucks. With all these cases that keep not getting solved at their hands, 
and we keep hearing that they're not being forgotten. But what about Summer Wells? Because she sure seems like she was forgotten. Just saying. Call me crazy. Many do. Um, it was very visible. There were also waterways, lakes, ponds that were searched. Um, there were areas um, that, that, that confectingly to have, you know, your cheat or your police sheriff or to be able to close phones and doorbells and ring bells <laughs> and surveillance cameras um that as you can imagine has been a bit of a chore to be able to collect all those and then but your your chief just or your your, yeah, your chief or your police sheriff excuse me your sheriff <clears throat> just told us you don't have any information and this person's telling us all the videos they have i mean a month a month has gone by you got nothing like nothing nothing them it's it's important so you know what's out there see betty didn't wait until the presser was over and then give her reaction she did it throughout the presser kind of like dolly um we have been reviewing that re reviewing it again uh, been helpful in but no new so we got the fbi we got secret service we've got all these outfits but no new information how how is that possible hey laundry a five foot five hey, 20 pound boy just disappear with all these security cameras, CCTV footage, ring doorbell cameras. He just didn't just disappear. How is that possible? Nobody just How disappears. Somebody make it make sense. We're going to turn the phones open here in just a little bit. Make it make sense to me. And where is Sebastian Rogers? How is any of us helping find Sebastian? And they're not giving us any idea of where to even where to even focus groups to look. It's like they've got us aimlessly out there in Tennessee just. Who's us? You're not even out there, Betty. You're. <laughs> They got us aimlessly. Who's us? <laughs> and you're at home, girl. See, she's living in a la-la land in her head. She's out there searching for Sebastian because the cars broke down and shit. Betty. <laughs> oh, Lord. Praying and hoping we find, like, we got to put this all together. They're not even guiding the volunteers. They're just saying, be busy. And the thing is, they searched so meticulously. Somebody get Betty that map from the TBI because they, they have been very meticulous in their searches. And they focused on a five-mile radius. So outside of that five-mile radius, it seems like it's kind of up to the volunteers and other search groups to keep looking, which means there is no specific place. Just look. Vigilant, help us. Say something, say something. Uh, get out there and look. But uh, we're not going to help you with anything. We're just If you want to look, look. If you don't, don't. I mean, I just, it, it, it's so disheartening. And I just feel like that. But you know what? Again, you know my stance. I think people in Tennessee need to vote better. I think you guys need to start <laughs> your law enforcement because this is getting freaking ridiculous. And you know what? It is glaring there. For people like me that are covering these cases, and we've got four freaking wide open cases, and you know that's only the cases we're covering. I don't even. It would. It would turn my stomach to look look under the hood, at this point, in my opinion. Go look for Ethan. Go look for Caleb. Go look for Sebastian. Go look for Elijah. Turn my stomach. Place where anybody has forgotten about him or is not pursuing this and it was noted uh, if you guys did not watch you guys you guys know i have like this major life life rattling crush on benny politan no, i don't have a crush on him but you guys know i love him he's like a bff to bullhorn betty right benny politan is and, he um, does know, he know that does Vinny know that i don't think he knows that i'm gonna have to ask him next time i see he's live he brought up a valid point you know he's been doing this a long a long time i mean a lot of people use common sense a lot of people can can uh, you know uh, read through the bs right and he brought up a point you know who else was also cooperative in the investigation of their missing child? You know? Casey Anthony. She was exonerated, though. I forgot I, I had you, a monster. None of us believe she was innocent. Thank you. She got off from this. She I got off for that. that. You know, they played, they played the case well. <laughs> they, played a they played a game of chess, not a, not a, uh, you know, in a game of chance. Not a game of reality. Pretty much done whatever law enforcement has asked of them. Um, at this point, we don't have any evidence. There is not any kind of an indication that there is a criminal people to understand. She um, can't let it go for longer. Investigation. She cannot let it go for longer than ten seconds. Any kind of an indication that there is a criminal element involved. Um, but yet we're in a criminal investigation. There's not a crim. I, I want people to understand what they're saying here because on one hand, we know that this moved to a criminal investigation weeks ago when they called off the search and decided to start uh, refocusing their search efforts. Remember that. 
They said this case is moving into a different case. This is moving into a criminal investigation. Yet there's no criminal element. What am I missing here? I, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm blending two cases. Maybe maybe they're not in a criminal investigation. Maybe they're still in a missing person status for the last month. I, I don't know. But I could have sworn that I recall when they said that they were um, um, reducing their search efforts and refocusing their search efforts, that this case is now moving over to an investigation, a criminal investigation. Uh, I could have sworn they said criminal investigation. But you know what? I was also that little boy right there. That, that's Elijah Vale. The same thing said was said about him. So I might be mixing the cases up. I might be mixing the cases up. But I just, uh, I'm a little fishy with the wording that they're saying. We are keeping options open. We don't know what has happened. We don't know where Sebastian, uh, there are investigation. Um, I haven't gone. I just want to say, listen to what they're saying, because I know everybody likes to say, oh, look, I'm going That door so loud. Shut it so I can get you. Sorry. I didn't do anything. Trust me, I haven't done anything. I haven't gone anywhere. I've been stuck here for the last month, right? I didn't even have a car. I'm down like four flat tires here across the board. So apparently there's somebody out there saying that they have this groundbreaking information about the case. I, I have it personally heard. I've heard it both ways. I've heard somebody saying that they have evidence to prove that he's alive. And then I have uh, somebody saying that they have they know exactly where he's at. Uh, you know, this is social media. You guys are going to have to weed through the BS, okay? I don't think either of those statements are true. Uh, but law enforcement is adamant that somebody is playing hocus pocus on social media. And it's causing some some heartburn in the investigation. That's what I'm hearing. I just want to... Who's playing Hocus Pocus? Is she talking about crime sleuthing? Reiterate that that is not the case. Um, the, some of the information that is being provided on some of the social media channels is inaccurate. And okay, why are we you know what they say, Mom. The bigger the hoop, the bigger the hoe. It's still running. So it must have been paused on your end. <laughs> and move. And there we go. Because a lot of what has been out there in some of the social media track channels has been rumors and speculations and theories, and some of that has been advanced, and people have caught a hold of it as if it's what's really happening. I want to also put a disclaimer on here. Whatever you hear across social media, listen, I say this all the time. I'm going to say it loud and proud. If you are not, if you do not have the firsthand knowledge, okay, you hear something on social media, do not call it into law enforcement. I promise you, if it is coming out on social media, the person, if it's real, the person has already called it in. You don't need to call it in. You don't need to double check on it. You don't need to do it. You do not have firsthand knowledge or know specifically who does have firsthand knowledge, such as your cousin on your mother's side was told by Aunt Millie, um, you know, two doors down. Those that, are uh, huge hoops. Well, you send law enforcement over to Aunt Millie or you have Aunt Millie call 911 or, or provide that information. Damn, Betty, I didn't know Aunt you Millie rolled like that, girl. To come forward. We want people with firsthand knowledge and accurate information. If you think you see something on social media, <laughs> reach out to the people and ask them if they have reached out to do you even tech them. bruh so um literally sounds exactly it's the same the same diatribe you know social media did it you know i'm just sick, sick and tired of it the bottom Hello line is everybody is coming in they're gonna keep doing this it's gonna be pushback i hate to burst your bubble but the bottom line is is people are ditching mainstream media so you guys can sit there and and keep you know wanting your mainstream media your very controlled mainstream media or you guys can get off your high horse and realize we're not going anywhere and you guys would be better off working with us instead of insulting us each and every press conference because i can Wow. <laughs> I knew she'd give us something good. You can always count on old bets. But the bottom line is, is people are ditching mainstream media. So you guys can sit there and, and keep, you know, one of your mainstream media, your very controlled mainstream media, or you guys can get off your high horse and realize we're not going anywhere. And you guys would be better <laughs> off working with us instead of insulting us each and every press conference. Because I can tell you, I'm working very hard to make sure that we provide accurate information, but I'm not going to stop people from theorizing, speculating or anything else. That's a violation of the First Amendment to the Constitution. And I don't oh. think people should be reaching out to people. I don't think people should be. Oh, my God. She is so... <laughs> Oh, 1096, 1096. That's 5150 where I'm from. <laughs> you know, I think that the reason why we have these chats is to let you guys get your anger and frustration and your opinions out here. So you're not going to these people's homes or filling up their inboxes. We're giving you an outlet to get some of that stuff off your chest. We don't want you going to the family. We don't want you calling them. We definitely just because some, even me, just some Joe Blow on social media says they did it. Doesn't mean they did it. So because they don't want you reaching out to families, they don't want you calling up and bothering people, they open up their platforms for you to come and spread your bullshit. How nice of them. Aww. Here in America, we need this thing called evidence. We have this thing called due process. And, and we need to let that process roll out the way it's going to roll out. However, I'm going to say this stuff stinks to high heaven. And ain't nobody going to tell me I can't say that. You don't like it? <laughs> Change the channel. I don't know what to tell you. I don't think Betts has been um, as active 
in the speculation part of this case. I know she's been gung ho for uh, United Cajun Navy, but to the speculation aspect, I don't think she's really been doing much of that. But all these other channels do, and as you just heard her, she supports that shit. I mean, she talked out both sides of her mouth right there. On one hand, she's saying she supports it. On the other hand, she's saying she don't. So, pick a side, Betty. Pick a side. Um, that has resulted in us getting information that is either... I know, Grandma. Uh, ...taking away time and effort from what the agencies agencies need to be doing as far as looking for yep. the best. And you know what also is? is taking away from that. When you have to come out here and tell people that you can't do your job because social media is becoming a distraction. Look, we all have distractions in every single one of our jobs. My distractions, law enforcement. They're wow. <laughs> wow. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> She's, uh... they're, they're distractions me. Okay? It is what it is. So... You know, you, you, you've got to play in the same field here. But the bottom line is, is they just can't keep insulting social media. It ain't working. And not only that, the people that are conspiracy Great. theorists, honey, I hate to burst your bubble. They're going to continue to be conspiracy theorists after this case. It just it, There's just different breeds of social media, but we're not all the same. We're just different breeds, that's all. Trust me, we got to accept it whether we like it or not. Um, we have had so far, uh, as of this morning, 314 tips. 314 tips, y'all. That's not enough. That that's not enough tips. Let's talk about this. I don't mean to keep stopping this stuff, but that's just not enough tips. 314 tips in a month? In a month? We had like 2,000 tips in like seven days in the Moscow case. How do we only have 314 tips in this case? And if they only have 314 tips, why are they complaining that, that, that they're being... I, I, okay, whatever. I'm not gonna... Because the tips aren't distracting. The bullshit people are calling in from these YouTube channels are... But either way, we need to be getting tips into them. I don't know who's out there in this area. Yeah, uh, okay. Let's not encourage fake-ass tips, bets. We need shoe leather work on this. I'm in Florida. I mean, if I could be in Tennessee, like I do, you know, I do the happy dance right now. If I could be in Tennessee, because there's some... Get a rental car, girl. Grift, grift, grift. Get that, get that rental car, girl. Pushes I want to look in. Say it again. It's 1-800-TBI-FIND. We are also taking tips through email, which is tips, uh, I'm sorry, tips to TBI, T-O, TBI, at tbi.tn.gov. Um, what's next? So we want people, as Chief Deputy said, to continue to share with this term warmer. People it may be more um, inclined to be in their yards. If you go out, and, if you have... A Let's take a poll in here, okay? How many people by the shows of ones and twos, okay? Who believes this boy ran off and is hiding? If you believe he's ran off and he's hiding, please put a number one in the chat. All if right, here's y'all's question. Okay, participate. How many the shows of ones and twos, okay? Who believes this boy ran off and is hiding? If you believe he's ran off and he's hiding, please put a number one in the chat. If you think something else, doesn't matter what else, doesn't matter whether you think it's nefarious or, or, or something else, put a two in the chat. But if you think he ran off, if he literally walked out his door and, and left, put a one in the chat. Anything else, put a two. Okay. Yeah, that's my thoughts too. That's my thoughts too. I'm just like, let me I see going, what her chat is. Saying. I keep going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You know, I keep thinking, okay, I know I have this like, this like thing in me that's telling me that there's oh, something I'm not seeing happen. anything. And, and my, my common sense is telling me that it's somebody that, because how sheltered he was, it's got to be somebody that knew him. There's no other plausible explanation for this, no matter how you look at this, whether he walked out the door or he, something else happened. Whatever it was, somebody would have known him. It's not somebody <laughs> Three. Else to him, period. So now that we have that established, in my opinion, again, that in, in and of itself is my speculation, my theory, right? That there's no possibility of anybody else. I just can't see it because of everything that the parents have told us as fact. So I'm taking everything that they're saying when I'm applying this. It doesn't seem like he just walked right out the door. But if he did, he would have been coaxed out. And for him to be coaxed out of that house, he would have had to know who the person was, period. So if you have him around nobody other than family. And we apply the common sense if he was coaxed out of the house, somebody he knew would have had to do it. To me. And if he wasn't coaxed out. To me, it could always be anything, right? It could be foul play. But it also could be that he was coaxed out and it's being hid, hid somewhere. Or maybe he did just take off. Why would he take off barefoot? I don't know. Beats me. But weirder shit has happened. Maybe he did just take off and then maybe somebody could have got him. That's always a possibility too. I mean, it it could 
it could be many things. That have many things to do, would have had to do it. Now that you can apply that that standard there, there's no other option than somebody knows something that knows him. That's what I think. Now, that's that's my main Bobby, theory. I'm not saying, I'm not saying perfectly. That's my main theory. I know they say that the internet and all that on his phone, it's just so locked tight, but and locked down. Mm, I ain't buying it. Seth himself has said that he's, you know, left Sebastian there for hours at a time. How do we know? How would Seth know? He wouldn't. So it's just, it's very possible. Something like that. He could have thought he was just stepping outside, not leaving. You know what I'm saying? Maybe that's why he went out barefoot. Maybe he had socks on. All we know is he didn't. He went without shoes. So maybe he stepped outside thinking he was going to be coming right back in. And just didn't. I think it's his daddy. But somebody in that family knows something. Somebody. So now that we take that and we apply that theory that somebody knows something, now we have to look at everybody that was in and around Sebastian before he left. So the people that were in and around Sebastian before he left were two aunts, a cousin, mommy, and him. And a waitress or two. Or an attendant at the bowling alley. Or a cashier. That's it. That's his day. Okay? Those are the people. That's it. I could fit my whole fat hand in her hoop. So, it limits the pool for me. It limits the pool greatly for me. Of who could have possibly done this. It's no longer this big, huge world. It's this small group of people. Wow. or ledges where, again, where a team could have gone to or to uh, check it out themselves. Um, we just want to make sure that every stone is unturned, that there's no stone left unturned, that we want people... And we're sick of hearing that nonsense, too. That's that's word salad. I don't like word salad. I don't live in, in the area of word salad. I don't like word salad, okay? Girl! Let's listen to one of the searchers. This is, one, this is the problem for me, right here. This is the problem for me. All right, our top story this half hour. It's been nearly one week since so, the Bastion Rogers were missing over in Sumner County. Our Jaxie Pigeon live at the command center this morning with a very... She just completely cuts the press conference off. She does. She doesn't even finish it. <sighs> Betty. <sighs> That's all I need to see. You support the speculation and then you didn't even finish the damn presser. Bye, Betty. Be gone. We're done with you. We're done with Dolly. Now we're going to Justin. Jesus Christ. Let me put it on two speed. We are here and we are dedicated. Thank you all for being here today. Thank you for keeping Sebastian in the public. Please continue to publicize this photo. Thank you all. There we have it. A bunch of BS, in my opinion. Um, oh, interesting. One of the bad actors said this press conference is BS. Say it ain't so. Hold on. I want to see if Nick Barris is going live. One second. Okay. No. Oh, so. So that is, remember, they said Donnie Cameron Yes, holla. He seems irritated. Mm -hmm. We're cooperating, and it took Ronnie Lawson to be like, they're not cooperating with the investigation. Remember, they can lie to us. They may be doing that just to... Um, tamper down Chris and Katie, tamper down, you know, the public. It does feel, he's like, I hope someday somebody, you know, goes and, uh, you know, calls in a tip and cracks this case wide open one day. Um, I, I want to go back to that TBI lady. Because she's saying people on social media saying they're talking directly with law enforcement. I don't know who she's talking about, but I've, I've not heard of anybody saying they're talking directly with someone with law enforcement, but there's TikTokers right, so out there too. Uh, this time I'll turn it over to Susan Keys that were searched. Um, were, Let's go to this one by one. Uh, at the beginning of this investigation, there was a large uh, land search for him. Um, it was very visible. Were... Yeah, that's it. Uh, exactly, uh, Darcy Corporation, but they never confirmed anyone passed the polygraph. Listen, there's no. Did you even listen to this presser? Did you even listen to this press conference? You are who they are talking about. You are part of the group that they are referring to. And yet you are. You finish the press conference and jump straight into more nonsense, talking about it being bullshit and how they can lie to you. Duh. 
but it's up to them. Like it's still their business. It's not for us to know everything. I just don't get it. No evidence that the parents did anything is what they say. There's no evidence that they did of anything. Okay. Well, tell me how a child vanishes without shoes in 26 degree weather. There's not a shoe print. There's not a footprint. There's not a camera. There's not a dog smell, dog track, nothing, nada. And you got the CPS investigations. You got uh, court hearings, custody court hearings. You got Chris. The story doesn't make sense. None of it. Absolutely none of it. He can't help and himself. He cannot help himself. Like, he's the worst out of all of them so far. He's even worse than Betts because Betts was at least talking out both sides of her mouth. She was still disavowing while encouraging. I don't know. It's confusing. But he is just straight up, fuck the police and what they say. This is what I still think. Hey, darling. God, I mean, we've got to find this child, y'all. I'm so upset. <laughs> I, well, I what I, what I you're knew. doing isn't helping. If anything, you're hindering the case. Even And I can say what I'm doing isn't helping. What I'm doing is just trying to spread awareness for any upcoming families that may have to deal with y'all's bullshit. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to let these folks know, do not trust YouTubers. Do not trust TikTokers. There are certain ones and it takes a long time to figure out who you can trust on these platforms. Do not do it. They will turn your life hell. They will flip it upside down, twist it all around. It's not worth it. What this was going to be. But what you're doing definitely isn't helping. It's not spreading awareness. And it's also hindering an investigation. Make that make sense. I knew what it was going to be. But when you hear it after you hear it, it just reiterates. And it's just so freaking frustrating. Now remember. Law enforcement can lie to us. And in my opinion, they're lying. Oh. Chris, take a polygraph. Why the hell are they going back and forth in Mississippi? Okay. Well, we're not going to entertain his bullshit no more either. This is giving us a look at who we should trust and who we should not. Partners, the other local agencies, the Secret Service, everyone who's had a hand in this case is doing everything they can to find Sebastian. Morale's high. We are here and we are dedicated. Thank you all for being here today. Thank you for keeping Sebastian in the public. Please continue to publicize this photo. Thank you all. Wow. And that's all she wrote. And that's all she Let's see what Pascal thinks. Wrote. Interesting. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, that just happened. Um, very interesting. Very interesting, don't you think? Um, all right. First off, shout out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this really quick because it's so, it's so easy for, and you know, I get it. I get it. There's a lot of people out here throwing out all kinds of crazy misinformation here all day long around this case. You know, if they're not getting it from the source, like if you're not hearing it from an actual human being saying certain things, right? It, that's either attached to the case or is an eyewitness or, or potential eyewitness that has potential evidence that could potentially help with the case, so on and so forth. It is very reckless. For us content creators to be out here talking reckless on the microphone. I do believe that. Woo! I absolutely believe Tell that. Tell them, baby. Okay. But Proud at the you. same time, I'm going to protect us social media content Ooh. creators out here. Okay. One of the reasons why. Well, it's up to each content creator to decide if they're down with speculation or not. If they co-sign it or not. Most of us over here on this side don't fuck with the speculation. Most of them do fuck with it. But you have that decision. And it's unfortunate, but the decision that leads to more 
clicks, more views, which leads to more money, is speculation and rumors. These content creators sell their soul. Souls. Because there's more than one content creator doing it. They sell their souls for clicks and views. Hi. They're having this conversation that they're having this press conference right now is because we are constantly having the conversation about Sebastian Rogers. If we were not using our social media platforms to raise his his voice or be a voice for his uh for him right now uh there would not be a press conference right now uh, we've been putting in work y'all All no okay i think pascal's coming from the different view he's coming from more like the icked male type of fr mind frame like pascal gets dramatic and sometimes runs with speculation but sometimes he doesn't like it's like he picks and chooses what he wants to speculate with um, I like Pascal, but what he's saying right here is like, yeah, you've kept him in the news, in the, the spotlight, but at what cost, what, what at what damage you could keep him in the spotlight without all the speculation without digging into his family, without accusing people, outright accusing people. You can still keep this child in the spotlight without all of that. So no, miss me with this shit, Pascal. Mm -mm. No, sir. All y'all, every single last one of y'all who's been sitting in here watching these shows, being a part of the conversation and whatnot. Let's be real. Without us putting in all this work, and I'm talking about all the content creators, Nope. Uh, so it's saying he's basically justifying that because every, all content creators, me, Deets, Pascal, Ickid Mail, Dolly, Bullhorn, it doesn't matter how you're covering Sebastian. Just the fact that you're covering them is what matters. No, I disagree completely. Without us putting the names out here. They're not, they wouldn't be doing this press conference. It's the same thing that happened with Madeline Soto's press conference as well. They did a press conference. They still have nothing. They didn't press any charges on anybody. Nobody. But because everybody and their mama has been has still been muttering her name in their mouth, putting the words in their mouths of her name, that's why they had a press conference. So now we're having another one right now. Why? Because you know what? The family, okay, or the family that is out there actually doing the hard work day in and day out, putting their feet on the ground, looking for this young kid. I'm sure they were sitting there going, hey, 5 ain't doing nothing. The law enforcement that be ain't doing nothing. Let's not forget this too. Very important to put into consideration here. You have a father. Seth Rogers out there, boots on the ground, doing everything he can right now to find Sebastian. Suddenly, out of nowhere, he gets the rug ripped out from under him. Actually, his whole searching world flipped upside down when the Cajun Navy decide to pack up their stuff and kick rocks because of a few threats. Okay? They're concerned for their safety, so they leave. They leave this man high and dry. Mind you, I have heard nothing, myself at least, okay? I've heard nothing about law enforcement helping out in the search, doing whatever they need to do as far as invest. Okay, we're going to stop that bullshit right there too. Lord have mercy. Mm-mm-mm. Yes, Max Smith, he got that from JLR. JLR has put suspect on the grandparents now. Um, I wanted to show this. So the last one I had was T Rev. Um, but his is so long because as they listen to the press conference, he's he's allowing people to call in 
with speculation. So as they are telling you, you are harming the case, you are harming the investigation. As they are saying these things, you have people calling in to speculate. So I don't think I need to play it. I think that says everything that needs to be said. Shit. So I'm not even going to play him. Um, let's watch this clip. Somebody shared it in my Discord. And I was like, what the fuck? Videos. Let's see. It was this one. Back to Seth Rogers. Seth, I have... Hold on. Did... Did I say Nancy Grace? I'm trying to get rich before I leave about this bitch. I'm trying to have things, but it's hard for a pimp. But I'm praying and I'm hoping to God I don't slip. Yeah. 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 Oh, yes, we did. We said Nancy Grace. I have so many questions for you, but we're running out of our time together for today. But I want to ask you this. I was listening to a statement of one of Mr. Proudfoot's wives. I believe there have been five. I'm not judging. I don't care. She's talking about the one Trev Tom did with Nina, the one he's in a custody battle with. Chris Proudfoot is in a custody battle with Nina. That's who has his only child, and it's a daughter. Um, so Nancy Grace is asking Seth about that. Who marries who or doesn't marry who? But this particular one named Nina stated that they had two children, one she had from a prior relationship, the second she had with him, and that the daughter had braces, and he hit the daughter in the mouth and busted her mouth. Guys, remember, Mr. Proudfoot nor the mother have been named a suspect or a POI in this case. My question to you, Seth, did you know about any of that? I mean, she's on tape saying it. I watched her say it. Did you have any idea that there may have been other issues of violence? She watched her say it. This is why... Nancy Grace and Nancy is the OG triple OG tragedy pimp. The children? No, ma'am, I didn't. And I know that Chris has been in Sebastian's life for a while now, before me and Katie were divorced. So I. <sighs> has Sebastian ever said to you or tried to communicate to you abuse in the home? No. He's, he's he? on multiple occasions sat there and was has told me he doesn't want to go back. And I've asked him, why don't you want to go back? And he won't, he wouldn't tell me. He didn't say why. He was just like, I just, I just don't want to go back. And it's, you know, at that point in time, I'm, I'm just like, okay, well, maybe it's the freedom that he gets at my house. And that's very true. We talked about that the other day, how like, Kids tend to want to go when their parents are divorced to go with the one that they are allowed more freedom with. That's, I feel like that's a normal kind of thing. And that's what Seth took it as back then. But now, now, because these YouTubers have put out into this YouTube world that Sebastian was beat and abused. Not just popped on the ass once with a belt, but beat and abused. Beaten and abused. Now, that's got Seth recalculating everything in his brain. And he's a teenager. And now I'm finding out a lot of this stuff. And it's, I wish you had told me. Nancy. Nancy, you're such a piece of shit. Such a piece of shit. I'm trying to get rich before I leave about this bitch. I'm trying to have things, but it's hard for a pimp. But I'm praying and I'm hoping to God I don't slip. Yeah. Yeah, you know, when you trying to get Bye, Felicia. 
Bye, Felicia, with that shit. Uh, that torts me up so bad because it's like they they have completely put all this out here. And now Seth is torturing himself thinking about it. And he's thinking about it, and it may not even be true. Just because these YouTubers are very convincing and, and good at trying to make you feel like what they say is actually the truth, that's not the truth. And I just hope that Seth thinks about that. I hope Seth thinks about the fact that just because they say it don't make it true, baby. Like, don't torture yourself like that. Don't let what these people are putting out here that are not facts, things that an ex-wife, an ex-wife is saying. She's just as bad if that's the case because she kept putting her kids back in that situation. Sorry, not sorry. I'll say it. But no, I mean, don't don't believe it just because they say it is what I'm going to say. <sighs> yes. Yes, Deeds. It's just disgusting. Yeah, I hate humans. Like, I say it all the time and people say well how can you go over these cases if you hate humans no i love victims like i hate that they are victims um i don't hate humans in that sense i just hate society man we're we're fucked i'm sorry but we are screwed up people suck absolutely orion people suck so on twitter there's not much Somebody said, I cannot say who altered this photo of Sebastian Rogers off the original, but this is different from what he looks like. Only use the original one. So they're talking about old crime sleuthing girl. You done made it over here to Twitter. This is Sweetie Pie Low. Wait till you hear this. Sebastian Rogers' stepdad, Chris Proudfoot, told Nancy Grace he would take a polygraph. He has declined the polygraph now. Think he's hiding something? Here's the clip. I understand. Ms. Proudfoot, did you pass your polygraph? Hello. The stepfather, Mr. Proudfoot, stated that he would take a polygraph if we set it up. As a matter of fact, uh, take a listen to this. Have the two of you taken a polygraph? I have. I have not. Would you be willing to? I've offered and volunteered on many occasions to take a polygraph, and I was told directly by law enforcement because of my whereabouts, I did not need one. I understand. Ms. Proudfoot, did you pass your polygraph? I did. Okay. Now, now listen to this. He says, I've offered and volunteered on many occasions to take a polygraph. I was told directly by law enforcement but because of my whereabouts, I did not need one. Listen to more. And Mr. Proudfoot, you have volunteered to take a poly. Yes, ma'am. If I were to set up a poly for you, would you take it? Name the place and time, ma'am. I'll be there. Well, we did. We did that. We set up a polygrapher, a very well-respected polygrapher, a place and a time. Mr. Proudfoot tells us that he has been instructed by the TBI not to be on with us today and ask for help finding his son, his stepson. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. See how she just played on those words? He was asked by the TBI not to be on here today to help find his son. No, bitch. TBI said, uh-uh, don't be messing with no Nancy Grace polygrapher. Don't be doing it. Don't be doing it, son. And not to take a polygraph. I, I never heard of that. I always loved it when witnesses, targets. I absolutely believe him when he says the TBI told him not to do that. It's just more about the polygraph. 
and he crime and justice posted that the glasses that were recently found are not related to Sebastian Rogers. And it's more about the polygraph. Oh, he went on with Vinny too? Jeez. How do I find that? Closing arguments? Oh, hold on. Damn it. Clo Let me go to closing arguments hashtag and see. Uh, court TV, maybe. I don't see it. Let's see. Oh, he must have just been showing a clip. Okay. All right. Uh-uh. No? I don't know. I can't find it. It see it says it. Oh, is this it? February twenty sixth in Hendersonville, Tennessee. It was a Monday morning. Katie Proudfoot says she woke up at about six in the morning to get her son Sebastian ready for school. But when okay, she you know what though? Let me. I mean, went to his room. I was trying to find it on YouTube. Share. I don't want to play it because I've already been shut down once tonight. And it's a 41 minute episode. Is this the one you sent me, Queen Bella? Yep, they need to all stop social media right now. Yeah, it's a 41 minute episode and I already got shut down for playing a five year old video. <laughs> so I kind of don't want to, I don't want to tempt it. <laughs> My son was acting a little pissy earlier and I started getting upset and burst out saying, miss me with that shit. <laughs> oh, he does. He talks to Olivia in it as well. So, yeah, let me drop that again. Um, Y'all make sure you go over there and give that a view. Maybe we can talk about it tomorrow. But I also wanted to show... This is what me and mom were talking about the other day. The little boy that got stuck in the chimney. 
this is like he went missing. It, it was like he just vanished and then they found him later. So I wanted to touch base on this really quick. The 20th of December, 2020. 14 year old Harley Dilly left his home in Port Quinton, Ohio for his final day at school before the Christmas holiday period would begin. Harley never made it to school. After being reported missing, searchers would turn up nothing and no trace of Harley were found. Yeah, it was like Harley. he had vanished from thin air. It wasn't until nearly a month later that the community of Port Quinton would find out the harrowing truth of what really happened to Harley after he went missing. So what did happen? Let's talk about it. This is the infamous death of Harley Dilly. All right now, I don't want to be getting Fremont, trouble. Ohio, to parents Marcus and Heather Dilly. And reports made it clear that both parents were very strict with Harley, despite the fact he was diagnosed with ADHD and autism. Harley had always felt like an underdog, but rather than let this affect him, it made him brave, kind, and he was described as having a very giving heart. This was evident during the Christmas period, where he would volunteer for the Salvation Army each year. He would also drop pennies around town as he walked around, as he believed this blessed the people who found them. Back during the time leading up to the good night, incident, baby. he was a freshman at Port Clinton High School. It wasn't clear if Harley enjoyed school, but he did enjoy spending time with his best friends James, Daniel, and Junior. He enjoyed so he's a freshman. with sports okay. and singing, but his main passions were gaming with his friends and creating YouTube videos. On his channel, he would make gaming commentary videos, mostly on the Madden mobile game, but he would also make direct commentary where he talked into the camera about his life. After the day that Harley went missing, it had come to light that Harley would often argue with his parents. When he did this, he would run away from home and stay at his friends. As he would do this so often, it was never reported to the police. However, a month leading up to the incident, the police were called to Harley's family home after receiving reports of a family issue. According to officers, they had to calm Harley down, but no other details were ever released to the public. This brings us up to Friday the 20th of December, 2020. On that morning, for some reason or other, Harley did not want to go to school. He told his mother Heather that he felt sick and asked if he could stay at home for the day. According to reports, she told Harley to get his ass to school. I will point out it would be <coughs> strange for Harley to miss this day of school, as it was the last day before the Christmas holidays. So, Harley got dressed, left his house, and left to go to school. Only, he never made it. His last confirmed sighting was by a surveillance camera at 6.08am. He was never seen alive again. That night, when Harley didn't come home, it was never reported to the police. Heather put a status up on her Facebook page, which said that he hadn't come home, but that was it. During the day, the school did try and call Heather to let her know that Harley never made it to school, but Heather never responded. In fact, that night, and the night after, Heather and Marcus went out for drinks with their friends. This is known due to posts on their social media pages. It wasn't until 41 hours later, at 11.50pm, on the 21st of December, that they would report their son missing to the police. The first thing the police wondered was why it took them so long to report their son missing, so they asked them straight up. They responded what we already know, that Harley would often go and stay at his friend's house after arguments with his parents, and he could stay out for days at a time. This time, they had argued with Harley about his mobile phone. A few days prior, Harley had broken his phone, and they'd asked his parents for a replacement. His parents said that they wouldn't replace it, and that he had to work for a new one, which angered Harley, causing an argument. The police then went to each of Harley's friends' house to see if he was there, but they couldn't find him. One of Harley's friends told the police that he had seen him after school, but he'd mixed up his days and he'd only seen him on Thursday. After all the obvious places were searched and there was still no sign of Harley, the police issued a be on the lookout order at 2.30am that night. On December the 22nd, the police released a statement saying, The Port Clinton Police and Fire Department, along with the Port Clinton City Schools, conducted an extensive search of the Port Clinton area this evening for Harley Dilly. The investigation thus far does not indicate any foul play. We are continuing to investigate any and all leads into the disappearance of Harley. Friends, family, and concerned locals all walk the streets looking for Harley, of but course, they were the missing child. Many believe that he could have been kidnapped, because if he had skipped... I just, I remember him leaving and them not being able to find him. It was almost like he just vanished, kind of like Sebastian. And it's like, I'm not saying this is what happened. I'm just using this as an example of how things like this can happen. Skip town. It was very unlikely that he wouldn't have been found. Yet the days went by and with it, the hope of finding Harley alive did as well. Throughout the time Harley was missing, his mother would post updates on Facebook and ask for prayers. His parents were described as being distraught, but cooperative allowing cadaver dogs and inspectors in their house who found nothing. Heather said, you see everything on TV, you watch all these crime shows and you think, oh, that's never going to happen. And they solve it in an hour. It doesn't take an hour to find out everything. You have subpoenas, you have warrants. It just, it takes a long time. By early January, the search had now gone nationwide and a reward for any information on Harley's disappearance was established, totaling around $10,000. This was upped a few days later to 20,000. On January the 13th, after an undisclosed tip off to the police, detectives searched a vacant house on Harley's road, near where he was last seen on the CCTV camera. As this house was vacant and there was no signs of forced entry, the police never had any reason to search the premises until now. And just a day after searching the home, the grisly details of what happened to Harley emerged. After Harley's body was recovered, the community wanted answers. They got these answers on January the 19th, 2021. According to the police report, on the morning that Harley went missing, he never intended on going to school. Instead, knowing that this home was vacant, he thought it would be a great place to hide whilst waiting for the school day to end, but he had no way of getting in. However, it is believed that Harley climbed scaffolding and a metal television antenna on the side of the house to gain access to the roof. It was originally thought that maybe he would chill on the roof, but it was cold outside. And when he was on the roof, 
Harley entered the chimney feet first. The chimney was only 9 by 13 inches, but Harley was small for his age, being 4 foot 9, so thought he would be fine. Harley made it around 15 feet into the chimney, where he hit a floor. This floor was where the shaft had been blocked between the first and second story of the house. He was now stuck and unable to climb out. Barely able to move, he managed to take his jacket and sweatshirt off to allow himself some more breathing space. He then pushed these through a chimney vent that led to one of the bedrooms in the house. When the police entered the house on the 13th of January, they found these clothes in the bedroom on the second floor, which prompted them to put a camera up the chimney where they found Harley's body. According to the report, when Harley was discovered, his arms were raised and slightly bent, elbows by his head, and his body was in an advanced stage of decomposition. Harley was found. The coroner explained that he had likely died the same day he went missing. This was most likely due to compressive asphyxia. This is where breathing is prevented by external pressure. In the aftermath, many were angry at Harley's parents. Videos would appear on his YouTube channel, which would raise questions about his home life. One such video was Harley locked out of his house in the cold. There was even a petition started to bring negligence charges on his parents. One comment on the petition read, I believe Harley was kicked out of the home several times, including Thursday, December 19th, forcing him to find somewhere else to go. Bottom line, he wouldn't have tried to go in a chimney if he'd had a loving, supporting, safe family to go to. They failed him on every level and need to be held accountable. Some even believe that Harley's parents were responsible entirely, claiming they had murdered Harley and put his body down the chimney. Despite this, no charges were ever filed and the case was closed. The reward fund would go on to be used for Harley's funeral expenses. May he rest in peace. As always, this is not an Mmm. So see, that's just an example. Like, <laughs> it can happen. I don't know. That's what I was wondering too, Love in the Laundry, when it first happened. But they just didn't feel the need, I guess, because it was locked up. I mean, who would think a kid would climb on top of the house and go down the chimney like that? My kid would be terrified. First off, he's too chunky to fit down a chimney. But second off, he's too much of a sissy to even climb up. And But look, the speculations and rumors were that the parents did it, that they went and they took his body and climbed up that house and put him down in the chimney. It just goes to show that this kind of thing can happen. And the possibilities right now are endless. I just honestly, oh, that's Quentin's. Hold on. Here we are. I got this one and I've got this one. Honestly, I just, I just think that the parents should. Like, I get what Seth is doing. Seth's just trying to make his rounds and make sure people are paying attention. But as he does that, he needs to keep his focus on the facts. And maybe, like, I'm sure it's hard not to let these other YouTubers play with your psyche and mess with you mentally. But it does happen, and they very well could be doing that. And, I mean, he just needs to stay strong and... know that sticking to the facts is the way to go and the closest route the quickest route to finding his son so all right guys i appreciate y'all for being here i will keep you updated on stacy peterson because I'm really, really interested on if uh, Nart Divers is going to go out there and retrieve her body. Um, I don't know. I'm, I mean, I don't know. I'm interested to know uh, why the police aren't wanting to do it. I don't. I don't get it. But anyways, I will keep y'all updated on Stacey Peterson and... Um, I'm sure we will continue to have more shenanigans, uh, revolving around Sebastian. So I will keep an eye out for that stuff as well. And don't forget Caleb Harris. I mean, a 21 year old just don't disappear. Nobody just disappears, but especially a 21 year old grown ass man. I'm just saying, I know 21 still a baby, but he's not a baby. He's a grown man. So, um, 
just keep the focus out there on these people. And like I said, Pascal did a live on Caleb Harris. Uh, I suggest you check it out. And I will catch y'all on the flip side. Thanks for being here. Bye. We are swimmers.